Check it out, check it out, why well, I just got a zone. It's probably the most expensive turtle wax product I have ever in my life picked up. $14.99 for a car soap from Turtle Wax. Unbelievable price-wise. But Turtle Wax told me they're sending me all the new stuff, of course, like usual, but it'll be a couple weeks. So I did want to let you guys know this will be out sometime this week. I'm going to review it Thursday or Friday. It was really heavy rain, so I didn't get to do it. And of course, Saturday, Sunday, if you've been following my Instagram, we've been house shopping. We're trying to get out of Kissimmee, Florida and move to a little bit nicer side of Orlando. So this is going to be out here very soon. It's meant to be as a regular car soap and as a, a foam cannon. But $14.99 AutoZone, I mean, come on. Turtle Wax probably is charging them 4 or $5 for this. And to see that, I was absolutely floored. Again, Turtle Wax is going to see me every 2019 product. I contacted them. I'm like, what's going on? Why haven't I gotten their stuff yet? They said almost all their products are bottled, but not all of them. And he just wanted to send it to me all as one giant group. But you got some new products coming out here. Um, I did a little bit of shopping for you guys. I took care of you guys personally. I also picked up this. This is a big fan favorite. Everybody's wanted. Grill's Garage Best of Show Spray Wax. So you will be seeing this here very, very soon. Again, it's been, I've just been really taking a break. For all you guys that keep on writing me and asking me, where you been, Chad? What have you been doing? Um, things with me is, I was getting to the point where I was almost burnt out like this. And I didn't really want to make a lot of videos. I almost felt like I was forced to make videos all the time. And I was getting to that point where I didn't want to burn myself out and not have fun at it. Remember, I don't do this as a big YouTuber. I'm not doing it trying to be like uh, guys with a couple hundred thousand subscribers paying their bills with it. I still have a regular job. I have a family. So I was getting a little bit burnt out. And I was just, I, I felt like I was so pushed to have to get three to four videos out a week. And I wasn't happy with life. So I had to cut back a little bit and relax. And it's been a really good time, actually. And uh, I've got to spend more time with the family on the weekends and stuff like that, which is also good. But I am going to get back to it. Don't you worry, guys. It, it was really nice to have a respite because now the new products are starting to hit those shelves. And of course, like this, one of my subscribers, one of you guys out there contacted me via Instagram and said, check out what they have at AutoZone. I just bought it. And so I went to AutoZone myself and I picked it up. I was just blown away. $14.99 for Turtle Wax, unbelievably overpriced. But you know what? I don't know. I can't give them a grade because I haven't tried it. I was supposed to try it Thursday or Friday. Thursday was really cloudy and windy. Windy and Friday was complete like downpour, heavy rains. It's kind of cold outside, so I have the garage door shut at the moment. But I just want to let you guys know what's going on with me. I just need to take that break. So this video will be out this week. The spray wax video, I don't know when I'll get it out. Probably the next couple days after that. Um, I will be going to the 303. 303 is hooking me up with tickets to Meekum Car Show. It's doing on right now, the Meekum Auction. It's literally like five minutes down the street from my house at the Kissimmee Fairgrounds. Um, uh, what else is going on here? Uh, again, Turtle Wax sent me all their stuff. 303 sent me some stuff. Stoner Car Care contacted me. They're sending me 2019 stuff. Uh, as the stuff starts showing up in the stores around uh, February, March. March is when it usually starts showing up, I was told. Um, I will be picking up everything and trying it like usual. Um, what else has been going on? Not a lot. I've also been looking at cars as well because if you guys follow me on Instagram, that's probably the best place to follow me is on Instagram right now. I'm down to narrow it down between two cars I really, really like. I just need to test drive the one. I'm narrowed it down between an Audi S8 for the full luxury sedan, but it has 520 horsepower by used one, of course. And then uh, uh, the Civic Type R, and that's why I put it up on my Facebook group. It's got tons of tons of traction. A lot of you guys are interested in it. If you follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, you'll see all this stuff. Uh, again, the, the last two weekends, we've been nothing but doing house shopping. It's time for us to leave Kissimmee. We are going to upsize, go to a bigger house, a nicer side of town, and just uh, start all over again, start out fresh. So again, this is what's been going on, and I do apologize for all you guys who have been wondering what has been going on with Chad. I still don't have the windshield replaced, as you can see. My hand right goes right through. I figure because it was done when they came out to replace the windshield in Safe Flight, they came out and told me it was it was the couple days before Christmas. So I figured ain't nobody gonna want to work around the holidays. And uh, of course, I don't know if you guys can see it right here. There's about I'll, I'll flip it over here and show you guys real quick, guys. So hopefully you guys can see that. There's rust right there. It's about I don't know inch inch and a half. And then there's also rust on the bottom seal. And Safe Flight said because there's rust, the glue will not stick to it. And they do, they, uh, I guess they have a policy where if it's rusty or anything, they cannot uh, install the new windshield. Even though there was windshield already in there, which is stupid, they refuse to do it. So right now, this car is sitting in the garage and it's not going to be moving. So uh, this week now, I've got to go and try and find an auto shop around here, a body of body, to cut that rust out, re-weld in some new metal, and then I'll have the windshield glass back on, which means I can drive it again. But uh, <laughs> that's basically what's been going on with me. I have been, like again, I test drove a Civic Type R. One of the guys I know in the Civic South Florida Type R uh, group let me drive their car, so I let him drive the GTR as a, like, a kind of thank you for him. Uh, the kid had never even sat in the GTR before, and I'm like, here, dude, here's the keys. You go drive it because you let me drive your Type R. Um, I am also waiting to go test drive a, an Audi S8. 
Um, I really like the fact that it's a full-size sedan. We went to the local Audi of Orlando, and I sat in an A8, but they didn't have any S8s on the lot. And uh, he said he'd let me know. So I've already found a bunch of South Florida. So um, I like the amenities, all the power and stuff, having a lot of power like a GTR, but, uh, you know, a family sedan. Or do I want to go to a brand new Civic Type R, which is essentially close to the same price. And uh, obviously, you know, it's, I don't have any problem with Civic Type R. It's just obviously Honda uh, versus an Audi. And uh, Audi is, you know, hit or miss. And I'm kind of, I am kind of worried about the, you know, repair bills and stuff like that. But that's generally what I've been doing here lately. A lot of just, we're shopping, shopping, shopping. And now we decided we're going to go ahead and uh, put the house up for sale. I don't know if it's going to be in the next couple of weeks to a couple of months from now. But we have decided we are definitely leaving Kissimmee. It's time to leave. So... Um, probably sometime this year we'll be either selling it and moving. So sometime this year with everything, the new stuff coming on, you might actually see me in an entirely new house. The house I looked at today, or I'm sorry, yesterday, if you follow on Instagram, go check it out. It's huge. It's in Windermere, Florida, which is the rich side of town we talked about. It is six bedroom. I think it's five bathroom, three car garage, which is amazing. It's huge. Um, it also, uh, square footage is 5,894 square foot. It is almost 6,000 square foot. So it's essentially like 2,000 something square foot bigger than this. It is monster home. It has a massive driveway, tons of room. I'll be able to park all my cars and the motorcycles in the garage at the same time, which is lovely. And so we'll see. I mean, it was a great, great house. I, we, I loved it. It's just up to my wife now because my wife is the money maker. Let's face it. And, uh, it's up to her what she wants to pick out. Uh, so let me go ahead and get back to your comments, guys. I do apologize. I've been going on here. How much is that new house? The house, they're asking, I think, 874000 for that house I fell in love with. But um, again, it's going to come up to my wife because let's, you know, my wife is the doctor here in the family. So I let her make all the financial decisions. But she's the one that said she wanted to start looking at houses. I didn't, you know, I was going to go look at the Audi this weekend. And out of the blue, she said, I want to go look at these houses. So we contacted the realtor. And then once we saw the one house, she said, I want to see more houses. And I'm like, uh, don't get too ahead of yourself. We don't have this house sold. It's not even up for sale yet. I said, I don't want you falling in love with a home if you don't if you don't have the down payment money. Because essentially, you know, you got to upgrade. Just like when I got rid of my 370Z to buy that, I had to have the down payment money. And so essentially, I, I didn't expect her to want to jump into house shopping so early. I thought we were going to wait till in the summer. But she said, let's go house shopping. And I'm like, okay. So I guess she's done with it again. And the town, Nathan, is called Windermere. Windermere, Florida. It's right in... Um, it's right behind Disney World. You guys can look it up on the map real quick. That's where it's at. Hold on, my uh, little watch is going nuts on me here. Shut up. And uh, so it's right behind Disney World, right off the 429, which is a toll road that runs there. It's really, really high end. That's where Shaq lives, but Watson lives, like a couple other. Tiger Woods lived in there when he got beat with his wife, beat him, beat him his car with the, the golf club. That's in Windermere. That's, that's the area of town it's at. Uh, yeah, yeah, you won't find that either. Uh, can you believe this? 2019, next year, 2020, and we're going to be in 2020. I know, man, a whole other decade gone. Uh, she makes enough. Hey, Seuss, Hernandez. Uh, yeah, waiting for Meguiar's. Now, here's the deal with that. I ordered every single bit of Meguiar's new products three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, because I, I was like, hey, I'm going to buy them online, ship it in, I'll make the videos for you guys. I on Friday I finally contacted McGuire's. I'm like, what is going on? It's been weeks, and I ordered. They're like, where'd you order it from? I'm like, your site, dumbasses. And uh, mysteriously, I get a shipping notification from UPS saying that I have a shipment coming in from California. It'll be on here on like Thursday or something like that. I'm like, wow, three weeks later, and you're just now shipping the stuff out. I wasn't too happy about that, but again, they were the only ones that had the 2019 products. Was the McGuire's actually, I guess, warehouse itself. But waiting three weeks to get shipment, that was really slow. So McGuire's, if you see this, shame on you. That's terrible, terrible shipping. When we order something, we want to ship out in a day or two, not three weeks later. Terrible uh, thing. But I will get all that stuff out. I bought the ceramic. I bought everything you guys saw. Every brand new 2019 object uh, uh, products from McGuire's, I bought. So you will see that here very, very soon. I don't know what their deal is with their shipping department. It is trash at this point. They've got to they've pick up the speed. And if they, let's say they had something on back order, mail out everything else. And then when the back order product comes in, then you mail it. You know, if that was their excuse. But I, you know, that's the way I see it anyways. Don't hold up the rest of the stuff for one product that's on back order. Uh, can we get the new Turtle X? Uh, can we get it? Yes, yes. This I picked up myself personally at AutoZone. It was $14.99, very overpriced for Turtle Wax. Again, it could be the best price plate in the world, 
but Turtle Wax is always meant to be a nice uh, beginner, a beginner's car cleaning stuff. You know, to average Joe's car cleaning. It's not meant to be high end. So at fourteen ninety nine, that is unbelievably expensive. And I don't know if AutoZone is just trying to be the first one on the block ripping people off. But again, that's just my first thoughts. But I have not tried it yet, so I can't comment on it. But rest assured, the video will be out this week. Uh, I, will, I can tell you though, real quick, guys. You know how I always harp and stuff on. People, um, let's say, it, you look at the car wash. Look at the top. See how it's kind of wishy-washy and really watered down in there? It's just sloshing back and forth. This is usually a sign that the product is very watered down, and uh, it's usually not going to be that great. So that scares the hell out of me. As a matter of fact, um, I ordered about six of these, I think, or four, maybe. I don't know. I ordered a bunch of Limitless stuff. We're going to be doing giveaways. I've told you I would do it. You know Limitless Car Care is one of the best products companies I've ever used. Some of the highest. But I don't know if you can see this. If you slosh it back and forth, it barely moves. It's very slow. This, this product is a double A plus car soap for the bucket wash and for the foam cannon. That's how much I love it. He had a killer deal, 50% off or something like that, every single product. And of course, 50% off, I think I paid $6 or $7 a bottle. This is just amazing deal. So it was right before Christmas. I spent like uh, $60 or $70 in products and we're gonna be doing giveaways. But I, I really, that's the difference between the quality and I only paid six or $7 for that. So that's what I'm trying to say. Normally I think it's around like 10 or 11, $12 for the limitless. Not too bad for the best products, some of the best car wash I've ever tried. But to see Turtle Wax head to head with that at that much, ooh, it's too much. Uh, we'll be doing giveaway soon. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, we got to the AutoZone. I worked there. You should have uh, tried that Jay Leno's. Yes, I did see the Christopher. The Jay Leno stuff now is starting to come in there. Uh, we'll see what it is. $8. I would say $8 is probably, depending on what product it is, uh, right on the high side of Turtle Wax. Again, that, well, I was just blown away. But, you know, here's my thoughts. As, as a just Joe Blow out there doing this stuff for fun. If I was in your shoes right now, guys, and I walked into a show and I saw Turtle Wax at $14.99, I would probably say, hell no. And because I understand where Turtle Wax is priced at, they're not priced to be the high-end professional stuff. They're priced at a lower line, and I get that. So uh, there's just so many products there that would be better at AutoZone. Now, maybe I don't know why I bought it. And I only bought this because I wanted you guys to get a fair and balanced review as soon as possible. And if I'm getting contacted by my subscribers telling me they have it already, then I need to go buy it myself and give it a fair and balanced review. And then whenever Trollwax exactly sends me their stuff, then I'll review the rest of it. But that was the only product I saw for 2019 that's already on the shelf from Turtle Wax. So, of course, I went ahead and spent the money because I wanted to give you guys a fair and proper review on it. And uh, that, that's the reason, reason why I bought it. Well, otherwise, I probably wouldn't buy it right now. It would have to... You know how much I love Limitless. This stuff is probably the best, some of the best car wash I've ever used. It would have to be on that level because obviously that's a much bigger bottle than this is. This is, I think, 16 ounce, and this big old Turtle Wax bad boy, I want to say, is like 64 ounces. No, it's 48 fluid ounces, so you get the idea. Again, it would have to be on the same level, and I would say, oh, go get it then. Uh, will you ever review any? Uh, yeah, I plan to. I definitely plan to. I just haven't gotten around to it. Marcel, what's going on, buddy? What's up, David? How you doing? It's 99 pretty good service considering the qual good quality. Okay, that's all right then. Uh, missing your videos on YouTube. I will definitely get them on, brother. Again, I needed to take a brain relaxer from the thing. Remember, I'm not, let's say, PewDiePie or any of those big boys that do this for a job every day. I still have a job. I have a family I've got to worry about. I've got to look out for them and spend time with them. And um, that became more important. And I was getting too burnt out. And I just was, when I was making some of those videos towards the end, and I was like, I, I need to get a month or two or three here off. Because I was just getting to the point where I didn't even want to get out there and make videos anymore. And that's not the kind of videos you want to watch if I'm not excited about it. I will tell you there is a product you guys got to see on the demo on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. I should be able to allow you to see it in the next week, I was told by the company. That's all I can tell you. They told me in the next week or two, I will be able to actually get the video, make it live. But right now, I can't post it just because of the fact that they have a, I don't want you want to call a, a hold up on it. And they, she contacted me and said, you are going to be able to put this out here around, I think it's like January 9th or 15th. It's somewhere like that. She just wrote me on Friday. So I'm like, sweet. She, she's like, you're going to be the first one with a review out for it. I'm like, dude, it's an amazing product. I love it. You know, it's on my blue car. Well, Friday I had the blue car at work and it was that complete heavy downpour. 
my God, was the repelling amazing. It was amazing. So I love the product. It's the easiest product I've ever used. I can't wait to show you guys. It will be out probably in a week or so, she told me. It, well, I will be able to make it live so that you can see the video. Uh, I feel like Turtle Wax Ice Spray, well, uh, it works really, really good. The ice spray works good. I'm going to uh, out of high school in a couple of months. So wish me luck in the plumber. Uh, good, good. High school is over, man. I, I, I still remember that now, guys. I'm a little bit older than probably half of you guys. Probably there's some a lot of my subscribers that are much older than me. But for me, I, I graduated in 1998. For you guys who don't know, I graduated in 1998. Uh, hence the Accord 79s, because that was the year I was born. But, um, you know... I still remember it. I hated high school. By the time I was in high school, I didn't want to be there. I got A's in every class, but I was bored. I hated it. I just wanted to go and start working a regular job. And uh, so it was different for me. I just was like, yes, I'm out of here. And I was gone. I remember my senior year that I didn't have to be there because I had a job. And so I got out at lunchtime every day. Well, my job didn't start till five o'clock every day, so I got to do whatever the heck I wanted. No one had to go to three or four classes every morning, so it was like, I loved it. And that's what I definitely remember from my senior year, but for the most part, I just, I, I hated being there. I didn't do dual enrollment. I should have done dual enrollment, so if any of you guys are still in high school, do dual enrollment because it, it's, community college is a joke in comparison to the university level. I went to the community college about two years later, and I just zoned out through it, and I got easy A's. But once I got to the university is when it really got hard, where you had to do a lot of papers and stuff like that. It was no more A, B, C, D, and all that crap on your tests. It was like, I want a 10-page paper minimum of all this and why the reasons that are behind it. And it was, that was, all my exams were like that. And every exam was full question, and I want full paragraph on every single answer. And it was, it was definitely a lot harder than community college. But I highly recommend doing dual enrollment, because you'll knock out a full year of school, and uh, nothing. It's just worth it. Ceramic spray wax. Um, I do have that coming in from Meguiar's. Again, Meguiar's was, I don't know what to do. They dropped the ball. I actually had to contact them, and I'm like, where the hell is my box? Do I need to cancel my credit card order and dispute it because you haven't shipped it out? And that's what I was thinking. I was going to have to cancel the order because it was three weeks and nobody, I even didn't get a shipment notification. Finally, I was like, what's going on? And they, they said, oh, it's, it's on its way now. So I don't know what happened, but three weeks is a long time for McGuire's. Ozium near air neutralizer. Hmm. Man into college and maybe transfer to university. I would recommend going to the community college first because it's very easy and much cheaper. It's the exact same credits as the college. If your local your local college usually accept your local community college, so there's no reason to uh, go to freshman and sophomore year at the university. Just take it at the local community college. You'll pay half the price. Then you just transfer over, and they usually accept every single credit. So don't sweat it. You know what I mean? Don't blow your money. Would you recommend uh, anyone? Else? Yes, 370Z. I absolutely love mine, David. It was a great car. It was paid off really quick. You guys know that. But I had to sell it in order to get that car uh, because I needed the back seat, even though – my son kind of rides in the front seat now, but, but you know, the fact is I absolutely loved it. It has amazing stellar looks. Now we don't know for a fact, a J Nissan of Japan already said in the Tokyo auto show coming up here in a couple weeks, they are unveiling the new Z car. I don't know what it's going to be a 400 Z, whatever they're going to call it. It will be unveiled at this to year's Tokyo auto show, which comes up in, I think in a couple weeks or a month or something like that. So, um, this might be a good time to get it. If you're going to get a 370Z, do not get a new one. Buy one used. Pay like 15 grand for it. They all look the same. They're all the same in the so inside, so don't spend any more money. Buy an older used one because they've been the same exact model for 10 years. Other than the front bumper, which who cares one way or another, just don't, don't buy it new. Um, uh, is the new stuff you're uh, demonstrating the Auto Fanatic wheel cleaner? What? Is the new stuff you're uh, demon... No, I haven't tried anything. Demoing? No, no, no. It's AutoZone and everywhere. I'm going to Victoria Community College right here and saving so much money while they are at the university and big debt university. Victoria, are you talking about in British Columbia? If you are, I've been to Victoria, British Columbia on a cruise about four years ago. We were in, up to Alaska and it went out of Seattle and then it's in the last stop on the way back. It, it actually stopped in Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, I'd like to see more videos. The window products, coatings, uh, actually... We actually, um, that spray I was telling you guys about, that spray on sealant that I applied to the blue car that you guys are going to be just like, oh, I put it all over the windows, everything. So on Friday when it was raining really hard, I didn't even turn my windshield wipers on. The water, the water beads were like gone. And that's so cool because you'll see that all you do is it, while the car is washed and it's still wet before you dry it off, that's when you apply the product. You spray it on, then you let it sit for a second, and then just spray it off with the hose. You don't have to do nothing. 
nothing. It literally is sprayed on while it's wet still. Then, then you go around the whole car, and then just water it down. Just don't let it dry, just spray it down. Now what I did is I went and applied a second coat to it. <gasps> That's it. I mean, you don't have to buff anything. You don't have to wait, nothing. It's just spray it on, rinse it off. You're done. That's all it was. And just the results are outstanding. I'm telling you right now, it's probably going up for a product of the year. If in my book, it's going to be product of the year. There, I never tried a product so easy and that repels water so damn good. Um, you guys are going to be like, no way. And that's how I was when I saw it. So uh, I can't wait to show you guys. Oh, Victoria Seconds. It's okay. Uh, would you say auto engineering is a good job? Anything engineering, Aaron, is a good, good job. I will tell you right now, many of these uh, air play people in our neighborhood alone are engineers. Uh, many of them have multiple homes. You make very good money. Uh, one of the guys in the Central Florida GTR Club is an engineer. He's an Asian guy. He has a huge home. Let's put it this way. He goes, he keeps building up his GTR, making it faster and faster and faster. And he keeps blowing transmissions in the GTR because he has so much power. So he has to rebuild them. We're talking $20,000 per transmission. And it's like, I just wipe my ass with 20,000. Whoop de doo. The guy, I can't, I, I can't imagine how much money this guy makes. It's absolutely nuts. So engineering is an amazing job to feel to go into. High, high paying job, high paying job. So definitely knock it out. It is probably harder. Not my type cup of tea, but hey, if that's what you're interested in, you should have no problems getting a good job and having a nice life and career. Is that Pepsi on the sunroof? Yes, it is. It is cherry Pepsi. That's what I have right now. Uh, just sign in. Where did you uh, get the new turtle wax? Cody, I got it at AutoZone. Hey, I'll show it to you one more time because Cody's in here and Cody's asking for it. This is it. This is their brand new stuff. It does smell like bubble gum though. It just like it says. I want to. I, I gotta take a sniff of it. I haven't taken a sniff since I bought the product, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off real quick. Let's take a nice sniff here. Ooh, it it smells just like bubble gum. Oh my gosh. You guys remember like the uh, the Hubba Bubba Bubble Gum or anything like that? That's exactly what it smells like. It smells great. Uh, so yeah, that will this product, Cody, will be, I'll, I'll have it reviewed sometime this week. Again, Thursday I was going to review it uh, because I was going to put it out for a Saturday like normally. And uh, it was dark, very dark and very windy. And then of course Friday we had utter, utter heavy rains, very heavy rains. So of course pointless for me to go out there. And then today and yesterday, we were out there house shopping. We were all over Windermere, Florida and Winter Garden, Florida. So if you guys want to look up the area where I am, that's where we're looking. We're looking to get out of Kissimmee and move to uh, just a lot nicer area of town. Uh, can you show the turtle wax again? Sure, Kyle. One second, buddy. Let me show you real quick. Hopefully, you guys can see this. So please bear with me. Let me try and hold it from the bottom so you can actually see it a little better. Bear with me. It's a little bit of a big bottle. So hopefully, you guys can see this real quick. So it's a snow uh, foam wash hybrid. So it's meant to be used in the two bucket system and in the foam cannon, which is really cool because I kept telling them to make something like that. And they listen, you know what? People can dog the crap out of Turtle Wax because they honestly, it's a cheaper company. I get it. But they of all people will listen. They take everything that I recommended and they said they, they uh, take it before the group community uh, in their company and they discuss what could be worked on what things that are, are are asked of them and stuff like that. What can they work on? What can they make products better? What what can you ask for them other than that? They actually take your suggestions and they run with them. I swear, I told him, I said, make something with a snow foam that you can put in the foam cannon. And uh, he loved the foam cannon videos. And guess what? They obviously made it. I haven't tried it. Don't know if it's good or not, but they listened. I like that. Have you ever heard of the company called Ethos Car Care? I've tried two of their products. I have not. I have not. I'm sorry, BC. Uh, PSB maker who's way better than ceramic wax. I have uh, heard a lot about that, but I have not tried it there. Uh, let me scroll through you guys. Uh, I can send you a concept and maybe, dude, I wish, you know, my dream right there. And when you're talking about the type R, um, you guys know, I've been, I'm starting to search for the type R. I literally owe 12,000 left on the GTR. It will be paid off around August or earlier. If I'm, I'm literally throwing every penny I make per month at it to get rid of the debt. Because um, I hate debt, you guys know that. But I've really been irked lately having to try and put my son in the back seat of all the two-door cars. It's not fun. He's getting older. He'll be three years old in March. So I've been thinking it's time to get a four-door car, something I actually like, something with some power, and that's what led me to Civic Type R. But uh, again, if Honda pulled a rabbit out of its tail and came out with a Honda Type R, a core Type R, anyways, 
in uh, the Tokyo Auto Show or one of these auto shows coming up in the next couple months, dude, you know right away, I would have it. Imagine having Accord 79 driving an Accord Type R. That would be my third Accord I've ever owned. So that'd be really cool. I test drove a brand new Accord last week, but it just wasn't as fun for me. It's a good car, very nice car, but it didn't give me the fun I wanted like the Civic Type R did. And I know from speaking to the South Florida Civic Type R groups, the guy that let me drive his car, he'd only put $4,000 in mods in it. And it went from 306 horsepower all the way to 371 in the dyno. I was there at a dyno day when they came up here, the whole group did. And they, he said, I only spent $4,000. I'm like, $4,000 in mods and you went up 60 something horsepower? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, damn, that's good. So, you know, to have a little bit of fun with it and the car is just, it's cool looking for me. It's, it's a little bit of a boy racer car, but I kind of like that. So, Unless the 8, S8 blew my mind, and power-wise, obviously, I know it's a lot of power. Um, I would love to have an Accord Type R. But, you know, I don't know if Honda has the balls to pull that off. Good, Cody. I will definitely get that up for you. I've heard Bay High Tracks in California have beautiful weather year-round. Um, then you can have all the fires, too. That no way, no way I don't want a lot of crap. Uh, so is the Turtle Wax Honey Snow Foam version? I don't know. Get it, Jag. Today we're falling apart nonstop. Uh, flash in the CTR is moving. Just bought the cherry snow foam from Wax Gods and shipped it label from Turtle Wax. Oh, really? Huh. Uh, gotta go to bed early. Well, get out of here, Aaron. Enjoy your night and have fun in uh, the end of your high school years because I'm guessing everybody is going back uh, to high school soon. And I've, uh, I guess because one of the realtors we, d we deal with, uh, she said she was coming back from Mexico and uh, her kids had to start school tomorrow. I guess the county down here goes to school back tomorrow. Again, I don't know. I haven't been in school since the 90s, so. I don't pay any attention to uh, all that stuff. And my son will be three next year, so he'll start like three-year-old private school kindergarten next fall. So we'll see what happens. So generally, that's what's been going on, guys. I, I hope everybody enjoyed that little bit of an update because I did want to let you guys know what's going on. I was so excited when we looked at these houses. Again, I thought I was going to go buy another car. I literally was starting to get to the point where I'm like, I kind of want to buy a four-door car. I'm sick of dealing with my son in the back seat. And my wife was totally cool with it. I'm like, cool, we're going to go buy another four-door car. You know, I'm like... Let's do this. And then uh, out of the blue on Friday she's, or Thursday, she's like, I want to go look at some homes. And I'm like, okay, let's go look at some homes. And uh, she showed me a list of homes and I contacted the realtor. And then we just went house shopping the last two days. I saw like about nine homes. And uh, the one home absolutely blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. I mean, I could have a video game room in all the upstairs above the garage where nobody can see me, has their own bathroom and everything up there. It's just, it's amazing, guys. You just don't understand how much room that house has. 5,800 and something square foot. It is phenomenal. Our house is 3,600, so I was just like, oh. It's over 2,000 square foot bigger than the current house we live in now, which is pretty big. But the three-car garage, mm, I, I really wanted a four-car, but I can deal with three-car. And it was more than enough to put all the motorcycles in, every car I own in, and I wouldn't have to have anything parked outside ever again, which would be lovely. So that's what I'm, uh, we're hoping for. Any microfiber towels you recommend? So honestly, right now, Venom, I keep, I've bought a ton of, uh, from Amazon, I bought the chemical guys, uh, fluffy ones or whatever. Um, here they are. Here's some right here, buddy. Let me show you. If you guys got to see that Slinger's uh, wax, this is what I used, okay? They're chemical guys, so you have a really short nap on this side, brother, and then a really long, thick nap on this side. So for a pack of, was it 12 of them or six of them? Either way, it was only like $12.99. You can find them on Amazon. They sell them on Amazon. They have different color combinations. They have blue and red. I think a different color in that red and green. Excellent, excellent microfiber towels. Two thumbs up. It's one of the ones that Chemical Guys does make or they at least carry that are very good products. I have not had a single problem with them. I've got probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 of those bad boys. So they are definitely a go-to microfiber that I love. So I've got no problems with that uh, from their company. Uh, what's up, Sean? How you doing, buddy? Uh, I got a question for you. That Carrillo's Garage surface wash looks like water, but it has amazing suds. Have you ever uh, uh, had a snow foam, but it, it's been raining. I can't really try it on the work the same. So the Griot's Garage Surface Wash, are we talking about the waterless wash, brother? Or are we talking about like actually their, uh, the brilliant, like this one down here. Hold on, let me bend down. Oh shoot, it's leaking. Like this one are we talking right now, the brilliant finish car wash, or are we talking about something else? Again, I just need to know so that way we're on the same level here. Cause I do have their waterless wash somewhere around here. I don't think it's, yeah, it's here, right? Is this it? Yeah, I got a spray on car wash from Griot's Garage. So again, if that's what you're talking about, but I, I don't, I want to make sure we're on the same surface. So are we talking about 
something else, uh, surface wash. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The foaming one, right? This one. You're talking about this one right here. Again, I, I keep all my stuff categorized so all the Griot's garage are in the same area so I can kind of just reach it and get it. Man, it's gonna suck when we have to move because I'm gonna have to pack all this stuff up because you know when you're doing house, one thing I learned about house shopping, if you put in your house up for sale, I wanna see that bitch spotless. I don't wanna see dirt. Some of the worst things I saw was, you go in there to turn on lights, right? And the switches and stuff, they be completely filthy and black and dirty. The floor would be nasty. It's like, did you even wash or did you mop the floor? Did you vacuum? It was such a turn off. One home we went on today was over 5,000 square foot. Amazing home. Whoever was staying in the house and, and uh, taking care of it for the homeowner was smoking weed every day. It was just, they literally had weed in the ashtray and all that. They had the little butts and stuff out there out by the, uh, by the pool. It stunk so bad in that house. I was like, so you have a 5,000 something square foot luxury home and you're letting somebody smoke the hell out of it inside. It was awful. You saw the, the literally the roaches and buds sitting in the ashtray. They just threw them out in there. It just was reeked in that house. And I'm like, you need to tell the head realtor, like you, whoever's in there is, is ruining this house for you. Because it, my wife went in and we were like, oh God, this is disgusting in here. It was just a mega turnoff for such a nice big home. And uh, that, that's the kind of stuff you gotta do. So. I'll be having to keep this thing completely spotless. I'll probably be boxing up all most of my stuff and putting it in a storage. We're going to rent a storage unit. So that way the house looks as clean and spotless as possible and as empty as possible. So that way the new new potential owners will be looking at it going, hmm, this is a nice home. So, you know, you don't want to see it cluttered. Clutter is a bad thing to have when you're looking for a home for sure. Well, let's hear this. Dad, to live in Cali. Uh, yeah, you should get the hell out of California. Have you tried B-Maker? No, I have not. Uh, bathroom, that one. Boom, that one, Chad. Like if you uh, shake both ends of them at the same time, I had the, like, the same texture, but Grigoros is amazing. Saws, see? Well, I have something in common uh, with you. I went to go through high school and was bored to death. And my uh, father passed away, and I was a senior, and I was a uh, work-study senior, and I was working Toys R Us. I got out every day at 11.30 before lunch. I didn't have to be at work till 3. I've been working uh, every since I was retired. By the time I was retired in 60. Yeah, I, I didn't want to be in school at all. I had no... So the only other thing I wanted to do in my entire life was be a, a fighter pilot because I, I grew I was in elementary school in Pensacola, Florida. That's where they taught the, the, all the Navy and Marine pilots. And uh, I wear contacts and glasses. You guys probably know that. And um, of course, you can't be a fighter pilot in the military. They would not let you. That's the only thing I ever dreamed about my whole life. So I had straight A's. I had a chance to go to the Naval Academy. Um, a captain, Navy captain, sat me down. He had me literally have a come meeting with him, even though I didn't want to. I was just like, I, I don't really want to go in the meeting. They're like, go like, you're going to meet him, and you're going to sit down with him. So he invited me into his office, and he was the he was the XO of the USS Kitty Hawk aircraft carrier. He was a Vietnam fighter pilot. He was in, the, they went to the Naval Academy, I think 1960 something. And he sat me down and talked to me and he said, I want to uh, uh, what sponsor you to attend the Naval Academy like I did. He's like, I know you don't cause any problems. You get straight A's in school. And I told him, no, thank you. Looking back, I probably should have said, hell yes. But at the time I was a young man and young and dumb, but I said, no, but that is the only dream I ever had. So when you knew you couldn't fly, it wasn't my wife. She knew she wanted to be a doctor and she was a little girl. I never had that, that dream of like she did. So to me, it was like I already had a job in high school. I knew it was going to be, it could be a career job. There was no reason for me to go to college. And uh, I only went grudgingly. And then I ended up leaving college with like 23,000 something dollars in college debt. According, I guess according to some people, that's not a lot. But to me, that's that's too much. I didn't want to have to pay that. But that's what I ended up leaving college with. And I didn't, I don't even do anything. I still work at the same company. And uh, so for me, that's why I tell you guys, if you do something, do it what you really want or don't waste your time going to college because, you know, there's too many jobs out there that are in de demand right now that you don't need the college degree. Um, there's just people that people don't want to do jobs like plumbing anymore. They don't want to do electrical. These are jobs that pay tons and tons of money. Uh, construction jobs pay a lot. And uh, everybody just doesn't want to do it. They think they're going to sit behind a computer and make $50 an hour. It's bullshit. You're going to make like $15, $14 an hour. And they, I'm going to be real with you. You're not going to make jack off it unless you're like the exact or somebody high up. And boy, these jobs that are the tradesman job, they pay a ton and tons of money because nobody wants to do it anymore. So the, the, if you are skilled, I'll give you an example, guys. There was a guy at my job at, at during the day. He would go to the uh, Tika, what they call it down the street here. It's a technical uh, school. He got his electrical master electrical like master electrician's degree. He left my job, works at Disney at Epcot right now. 
He started him at $38 an hour. To All he does is work midnight shift at Epcot, sits in an office, and until somebody says, hey, something in a rider was not working or something in a building is not working, we need you to come check it out. So if there's nothing to fix, he literally sits there at $38 an hour and just sits in an office. No college degree needed. And that's how much they're paying. Uh, it's just it's just like, you know, and he said he gets overtime every single night. And that's just mind boggling that that's starting pay out there at Disney for an electrical engineer, or electrical uh, uh, master electrician because they, they need that. And it's in demand. So he left my job making like $14, $15 an hour, went right over to Epcot making 38 an hour. So that's just a little bit of story for you. And he said he loves it. He doesn't do jack all night long. He said they might call him and say, hey, this ride was having problems earlier. We couldn't get it fixed. I need you to run the whole electrical problems, figure out what's going on. And that's what he does. Other than that, he said he sits on his phone in the office and does nothing for $38 an hour. You can't really complain about that. That's amazing money. What's going, Brian? How you doing, buddy? Dropped out of college and make billions a year now. Well, that's good. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, not too much. We're going to be getting some new products uh, out here for you guys. Uh, Turtle Wax, uh, I just bought this at AutoZone, $14.99. Very overpriced for Turtle Wax, but we do have it, and it will be coming out this week. I also picked up this at AutoZone, also $14.99. Expensive, but we know Grillo's Garage Best of Show Detailer is out of control. Amazing. As a matter of fact, the Best of Show Detailer, my thumbnail from that video has been stolen so many times and you can go to websites that sell the products and it's my car show with the thing on there you will know it exactly i mean people steal my thumbnails from these videos all the time it's so funny and uh it's just like oh my god you know so that means my my again another one go on to uh, ebay type in mcguire's endurance gel it's my honda prelude with the entire mcguire's endurance gel pictured in front of it it's my car they took my picture copied it and uploaded it as their own i see that all the time and all these things but yeah i knew that the uh, best of show detailer was amazing so i went ahead and picked up the best of show spray wax everybody kept asking for it so i went ahead and picked it up again 14.99 a little bit on the expensive side for a spray wax but if it holds true to the best of show detailer it'll be worth every penny so that's what i actually did uh, but the pink soap, the pink soap is not a soap. It's uh, Limitless Car Care's Swift Shine. So it's the quick detailer with Carnuba wax in it. So not only is it detailer, but it's also a bit of a spray wax as well. So what in this product, if you watch my video on it, it's outstanding. So when you actually apply this, it will leave a bit of a haze as any spray wax would. All you do is lightly come back and buff it off and it actually gives you protection. Where a regular detailer doesn't really give you the protection. This actually gives you carnivore protection in it. It's really, really good. And I want you guys to know that. Again, I bought this and the Limitless Lather. I think I bought about five or six of each. And we're going to be doing giveaways. I promised you I'd start doing giveaways. Limitless Car Care actually, uh, he didn't hook me up. I paid for these on when they had a sale. I paid for them with my own money. And I plan to actually do um, giveaways using those because I want to give you guys some of the best products that you might be scared. Maybe you don't want to buy online. Maybe you're too scared to buy online. I bought it for you and I will ship it directly to your house. Whatever address you guys give me when we actually start doing, I'm going to do the giveaways here very soon. So please bear with me. I'm going to be doing, everybody's going to get, whoever wins is going to get a full set of the display detailer plus the car wash. So that way you guys can try both for yourself. Everybody I know who has tried these products after they've uh, watched my videos said they were some of the best car wash they'd ever tried and the best products they've ever tried. And uh, I want to put my money where my mouth is. And I did. I went ahead and bought tons of them so I can actually give them away to you guys. So that's what's been going on. Uh, Walmart does not have it in stock yet, Brian. Did you see the Adam's Just Spray? I have seen pictures of it, Adam, but I have not tried it out yet, buddy. Uh, I see you up in here, Cody. What did you miss? A bunch of stuff. Uh, my dad will sue them. Uh, Walmart doesn't sell Rios. What's the new soap? The new soap is Turtle Wax Snow Foam Wash. Can you guys see it? This is brand new for 2019. Uh, I haven't even gotten this from Turtle Wax yet. Turtle Wax is still uh, said they had a couple more. Uh, so if you guys got to see the SEMA, they showed all their 2019 products, but they aren't all bottled yet. So he had to wait for them to all be bottled. He said they were almost all bottled, but he wanted to ship them to me in one giant shipment, I guess, to save money or whatever. So he was just waiting. But he said, either way, I'm still going to have it a month or so before they even hit the Walmart and other store shelves. That's just a rare product that ours is already out. So I went ahead and was like, of course, I'm going to buy it. So I went up there and spent my own money to buy it because, you know, that's why I like doing these kind of things. Happy New Year to you as well, driver. Happy New Year to you. Uh, let's do not too much, buddy. Walmart just carried chemical, guys. That isn't worth the price. That's $16 for soap. Very expensive. 
Maguire soap is way better than Chemical Guys soap. Now, Chemical Guys has some very good uh, foaming stuff, like your watermelon snow foam, honeydew snow foam, Mr. Pink, excellent snow foams, excellent. But for regular two bucket method soaps, they're not that good. Now, I will tell you the uh, uh, watermelon snow foam is, is pretty dang good in the uh, two bucket method. But again, you can't buy that at Walmart. You're gonna have to buy it over online or at one of your local detail uh, shops. Uh, do you still have the Do you still have the Honda Accord 1989? I have never owned a 1989 Honda Accord. I had a 1988 Honda Accord, but way before I had this channel back in like 2002, 2003, I had it. And uh, I've had a, a 2000 Honda Accord Coupe I bought brand new in 2000. I was like 19 years old and I bought it. I was just young and dumb. It was like 25,000. I was super in debt every month. I hated it. I had no money to spend. I ended up selling it because I was like, screw this. Other than that, I haven't had another Honda Accord. I've only ever owned that two Honda Accords. Your step, your stepmom got busted for tax fraud. That's nice. Oh, by the way, I heard that uh, while well, the government shutdown is going on, nobody gets a tax refund. That's pretty funny. You know, uh, that's pretty crazy. Again, we don't live on the tax refund. We were actually going to use a tax refund to resurface our pool. And because our pool has to be resurfaced. And it's like, yay. And they're like, how much is that? And they're like, four to $5,000. And I'm like, oh, that's expensive. Uh, so that's what we we're going to use our tax refund for is actually last year tax refund went to put in new air conditioning in because our air conditioning blew out in January. So we used our tax fund refund to get us to pay for a new air conditioning. It sucks. I'll do all autos ones. As far as I know, Dalton, they all do. What's your New Year's resolution? I don't know. I didn't really think about it, Kyle. Uh, you're sad. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be sad. You should just enjoy your life, man. Uh, sometimes you're down, but then the next minute you're up. It's just like a roller coaster. Oh, yeah. That's great right there. Oh, man. Speaking of Mr. Pink, here it is right here. I, I totally forgot Mr. Pink was here. A grand, great snow foam cannon product. Very, very good. No complaints at all. So I do have this. I've yet to try it. It's the Chemical Guys V07 Optical Select High Grade, uh, High Gloss Spray Sealant. I've never tried it yet, but I do have it. Again, I haven't really tried it. So bear with me, guys. I will get there. I just haven't tried it yet. You need my tax refund. Well, Dan, you better uh, you better talk to Trump and the Democrats, and you better get something worked out there, buddy. Because right now it's shut down, and from what I heard, there's no uh, tax refunds that are getting even out. So I don't know. It doesn't bother me any because you you can't expect a tax refund. You can't expect to live on it, and that's real talk right there. You got to be you got to be out there, and you got to be having your own money. If you get taxes money back, that's great, but you can't depend on it. You got to depend on your job Monday through Friday or whatever you work. Oh, uh, I've done the red Hyundai accent. We got rid of that years ago, man. Where you where you been, Liam? We got rid of that thing back in 2004. I'm sorry, 2014. We got rid of it when we bought my wife's Hyundai Tucson, and then we in 2017 was it? I'm trying to think now. 2000, yeah, January 2017. We bought the the Toyota Sienna out there. Five days later, we bought the GTR. Literally five days after we bought the Sienna, we bought that. I think we owe 18000 on the Sienna and 12000 now on the GTR because I pay so much extra on it. So that thing will be paid off here in a couple months. I can't wait for it to be gone. Like I, I've i never paid so much for a car before. So getting that much weight off my shoulders is like, uh, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not fun. But now I need a four-door car. It's starting to piss me off. Uh, I'm not living off of getting wheels for G37. We'll just save up some money, bro. You should be able to easily do that. Just work a little bit of extra hours, work some overtime, save up that money in a, a separate account, like in your savings account. And then when you have it all, then you spend it all and you buy cash. It's really that easy, man. Uh, burn that Trump sign. No, burn yourself, man. Don't worry about my Trump sign. You just need to be a hater. You're just a hater. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Enjoy it. Um, haven't gotten taxes in 16 years. Um, the one, the first and second year we were married, me and my wife were married, we had to actually pay into taxes. My wife makes too much money being a doctor. And, uh, even though she pays in, I think last year she paid in like $38,000 in taxes, 38,000. Let that sink in for you young guys out there. 38,000 she paid in in taxes. We it still was saying we had to pay in and we owed, we owed like $3,000. So please, not everybody gets it. So and there are all these guys are like, I'm getting my new TV, bitches. It's because my wife is paying for your damn TV. So and you, you know, these guys are making, I paid in 6,000 in taxes. I want my money back. Well, my wife paid 38,000 in taxes. So I don't want to hear about, oh my God. You're like, cause you don't know. I can't even imagine like people 
uh, such as Trump. How much does he have to pay? And he's got to pay him millions every year in taxes because of all the crap he has. So, you know, the, the, the low end, yeah, you get a lot more money back. But then the high end, it's just like you're just trying to not have to pay in. That's what sucks. You subscribed. All right, brother. Welcome to the party. Uh, yeah, dude, uh, taxes. I remember back in the day, you know, you just, you know, cash jobs were great. As a young person, you just did cash jobs on the side and stuff. And, you know, you just like, oh, well, you know, mow yards for like, you know, 15 bucks, 20 bucks cash. Whoop de doo. It's just in your pocket. You don't have to deal with that. But once you start getting a real job, it kind of sucks. You actually got to do it, you know. And uh, hey, you know what? That's life. That's part of living. You got to always pay in taxes. It's been that way for thousands of years, you know, um, just the way it goes. Uh, broke boy. Uh, yo, what's up, Jacob? How you doing, buddy? It's been a little while. I know, I know, I know. We're hanging out here with uh, the windowless pre the windowless prelude here. No window, no windshield. That's what's crazy about it. Because I knew I wasn't going to bother any body shops. Because I knew during um, uh, the holidays they were going to be like, I ain't doing no damn work during the holidays. So this week is when I'm going to go to find a local body shop to cut the rust out right here. There's just a little bit of rust here, and there's just a little bit of rust in the bottom. Other than that, it's rust free. There's no issues. The paint's flaking off because it's so damn old. But other than that, it's just a little bit right here that's got to go. And then I can put the new windshield back in, which allows me to drive it again. The car runs great, drives great. The guy, the Honda wizard over there that did my blue prelude as well, amazing work. The thing runs so damn smooth. Yeah, but I just got to get a windshield in it. Otherwise, I can't drive it. You know what I mean? So that kind of sucks. Uh, uh, there we go. So... How has everybody been? I, I hope everybody hasn't quit out on me. I've got we got tons of people in here tonight. I am really appreciative about that. Again, I needed to take a mental break. I really needed to sit down and not have to make videos. And that was the point I was getting at. I was having to make videos three to four times a week, and I just wasn't happy with things anymore. I felt pressured all the time. You've got to have fun with the products. And if you're not having fun making these videos, you can tell in people's videos when they're forced to make videos and that's the only thing i just needed a break i feel a ton better now i'm like yes you know it's a new year i usually slow down around christmas time anyways around the fall because you know there's new no no new products to try but then you hit it start hitting it hard january because hey products are going to start to roll out now and then you're hitting it hard all through through summer because of course those are the peak months and my youtube channel even shows it every year it goes, it starts from uh, March, April. You'll see everything just go up, 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 up. And then about July, August, it, it, it plateaus. And then yeah, September, October, November. And ev every single year it does that. And that's because most of the country is in winter time. So they're not worried about washing the cars. So, you know, it's like, why make three or four videos a week if uh, subscribers and views and everything are down? Might as well take a break. And that's generally what I've been doing. So I didn't, I didn't forget you guys. I just really needed that break. And that was my... Ah, time. You know what I'm saying? So that we can do it. I was, I was thinking when I was looking at that garage yesterday, that huge home, it's three car garage, that I can literally leave the entire one side wide open. I wanted to uh, hook up maybe like six or seven uh, LED lights above, you know, on the, the, the ceiling. So it'd be super, super bright in there. And then that way I can make a lot more videos in the garage, whether it's inclement weather or not, it can be in the garage the entire time and it would look really, really good. So I'm really thinking about doing that. But again, it's what me and my wife decided to do. Her student loans are almost gone. And I think that's why she's at the point now where she's ready to move out of Kissimmee, go to a nice, nicer side of Orlando, and just generally uh, you know, start shopping around. And that's why we went this weekend, because I did not expect it. She told me out of the blue, I want to start seeing homes. We had talked about leaving sometime this year, but out of the blue, she's like, I want to see these homes. And I'm like, all right, you're the boss. Let's go. And so I scheduled the realtor to start showing us homes. Do you have a shop back? Yes, I do, Christian. It is in the, the closet in there. Uh, I don't know if you guys can be see it, but it's, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's boxes in the way. You see it down there, brother? It's right there by that little tiny Christmas tree. That's where it's at. It's, it's the Home Depot brand shop back. So it really, really, really good. Uh, all year round. I appreciate that, Cody. You know I appreciate you. Have you tried the McGuire's Hyper again? No, because Meguiar's took three weeks to send me the whole box, so it is not even at my house yet. Um, Meguiar's, I don't know what they're doing at their warehouse, but they're slacking their tails off. Meguiar's, you hear me? I'm telling you right now, you're slacking. You're slacking. I'm in the shipping industry. I've been there 21 years and change now. You're slacking. If you have a product in back order, and if that was the problem, then you ship every other product that next day, and then you wait, and then when the back order product comes in, then you send out the back order product. That's how you do it. You don't wait, make me wait three weeks to get my box even shipped because then I think I've had fraud. 
and I've been robbed and I need to go back and cancel my credit card uh, thing for them. And that was at the point if they had, because I contacted them, I'm like, where's the hell is my package? And they hadn't even shipped it out yet. And I was going to go ahead and cancel it. I was going to go with my credit card company and be like, cancel that payment. They stole my, my information, my stuff's been stolen, cancel it. I never got the product. And uh, then mysteriously on Friday, I got a shipment notification that it will be here coming from California sometime on like Thursday or Friday. And I'm like, damn, almost a month later, you finally get it out. So I'm not happy with McGuire's right now and their shipping policy. Really screwed up. And uh, coming from somebody in the shipping industry, that's the way I see you need to do it. If it's on back order, just ship it separately when it comes in stock. You know, I've already paid for it. That's fine. I know you're going to get it to me, but get me the products that you have in stock now. And then the rest, you get it shipped out. That's all I want to see. I love the houses you're posting on Instagram. Jacob, appreciate it, man. If you guys haven't followed me on Instagram, it's just the same. Accord 79, the O in Accord is a zero. The same with Facebook. Facebook is the exact same. But I've been posting a couple of the homes we looked at on, uh, on Instagram. So if you guys want to see some of the homes we're looking at, the one home I really like, I posted it today on Instagram. Feel free to go check it out. Um, I hope you guys do like it. I know I do like it. It's monster home. I love it. Tons of garage space. Love it for all these videos. No more airplanes over the houses. No, I didn't hear a single airplane over the house when I was making when I was there the entire time. We stayed there for maybe 30 minutes and I didn't hear a single. I think so the, the house backs up to I guess the, the main road that runs by the neighborhood. I might have saw two cars pass the entire time. It's so damn quiet. And just on the other side of the road is a lake. So it's like from the second floor of the home. You get lake views all day long because there is a kind of a house across from it. Uh, but so, but from the second floor, you're looking right over that other house across the street from you. And you got full lake view. So it's like, hey, this is pretty cool right here. Some good views. You're not quite on the lake. But we looked at a couple homes today that were on the lake with boat docks and everything. But they just weren't that special. They were kind of older homes and stuff. And I was like, ugh, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, hey, what's good, Lizard? What you doing, buddy? Forerunner. Uh, yes, I did test a Forerunner last weekend. Um... They're definitely outdated interior-wise, uh, but the Forerunner I liked was the TRD Pro in that really cool Voodoo Blue. How about $49,000? I went, oh, $49,000 for a Forerunner. No, just because it was a special TRD Edition Blue. So because it's got different shocks, a skid plate, different wheels on it, and that cool Voodoo Blue. $49,000 thousand dollars and most dealers around in the country are selling them for 50 to 52 fifty two thousand dollars for a forerunner are you kidding me just because it still has a couple special things no so that was automatically tossed out if it was like 41 42 thousand i would have been like this is nice and very roomy obviously forerunners really really hold their value obviously it's a toyota so it's going to last forever but when i found they think they're like yeah we can get you that uh, blue one in and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah let's let's look, look it out so i started looking online how much they were selling for Auto Trader, car, Google, car Gurus, and everybody was 49, 50, 51, 52,000. And I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, no. And I'm like, that's just too much. Beautiful blue. If you haven't seen the Voodoo Blue in the actual um, Forerunner, they make it in the Toyota Tacoma as well. We test drove that Tacoma. The Tacoma, my knee was like rubbing the speaker grill the whole time or whatever it was on the left. I hated it. But the Forerunner was really, really nice. I liked it. But when I saw it, I had sticker shock when I saw it. And I was like, this is definitely. Definitely not my type of vehicle. Otherwise, I had no problem with it because I'm like, it's a Toyota. It's going to last forever. The resale value on the 4Runner is through the roof. I'll be fine with it. Lots of room, lots of comfort. I'll be fine. I can go ahead and pick up this. And then I was like, because my wife, you know, being a Toyota now, she likes the Toyotas. And so she was totally cool with it. We all test drove it. And I was like, oh, 49000 or 50000 I'm going to go ahead and walk away now. I'm not that interested in the car. When I know a base 4Runner sells at like $32,000, and I'm like, no, no way, no way. And like a premium loaded version 4Runner sells for like 43000 So I was like, no, no. So that was an automatic no-go, which led me to the Audi S8. I've been researching them, 520 horsepower, by like a 2013, 2014. They're all the same body style anyways, no difference. And... Um, Sadly, all the cars, the used ones are in South Florida because, you know, that's where the money is. And I was like, damn it, I really want to test drive one. Other than that, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Civic Type R. Unless, like I said, again, Honda comes out in one of the next couple of months, auto show, and says, look, we're bringing a core Type R out. Then pff, sign me up, bro. We're hitting that Accord up right away. How's GTR? GTR is doing great. I drove it to – I drove it for Christmas all the way to uh, Jacksonville, Florida and back. So on Christmas Day, I took the sucker all the way to Jacksonville. I almost got hit three times with it. So for some reason, I guess during Christmas, people don't pay attention to people around them. I'm just driving down the road in my lane. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and pull right into you like this. I'm laying on the horn, slamming on the brakes. Three times it happened in one day. And I had the dash cam in that car, you know? And I'm like, whoa, buddy, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm not deviating. I'm just cruising on the way, doing like 80 miles an hour. And the guys just went right into my lane, completely in my lane. So I'm slamming it off, going in the shoulder, trying to get away from the guy. And I'm just laying on the horn. I'm like, you asshole. And I'm like, what the hell? And three times it happened. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, that was the last time I drove the car because it, during peak season at my job, my job hires like an extra 100, 200 people. Well, that meant the parking lots were full and I like to park my car way out there, right? And away from people when I take the GTR to work. So that's generally why I haven't driven it in the last couple of months, but I did drive it up there. Other than that, you guys got to see, I used it in the Slingers video. You just guys got to see how dirty it really was. Even though the car looks like a cleaning video, you get to actually see the final results, how dirty it really was. And that product is really, really good. I got to give that Brian guy two thumbs up. As a matter of fact, he sent me his, it's a tablecloth in here. There's a banner, but it's a tablecloth that he uses at his, like, uh, the demonstration boots and all that stuff. And he asked that I send it back to him because he's like, hey, I don't have a banner for you yet, but you can use my tablecloth. And I'm like, okay. But he sent me full uh, shipping stuff, and I just got to drop it off at the post office probably sometime this week and ship it back to him. And he was really, really nice guy. That was the very first product he ever made with their company. They're just getting it off the ground. So for a first-time product, dude, that's it was amazing. Amazing spray-on, waterless wash plus wax. Amazing results. So I was really happy with that. Get a Tundra. We got inside of a Tundra. My wife had trouble getting inside of it. And she's like, no way. It was too high for her. So that was an automatic no-go. And so, so I was like, all right, I'm not going to waste my time trust driving it. Um, I did try it. Like I said, I got inside a Camry. Not for me. I didn't even test drive it. I got inside the Tundra. Didn't test drive it. I got inside the Tacoma. I did trust drive it. I, it was rubbing my knee really bad just going around the test loop they had. I like the Forerunner the best. It is very aged. It definitely needs an update. It's like, what, 10 years old now? But, you know, when I looked at the color I really wanted, I thought it was beautiful in that voodoo blue. And I saw how much it was. I was like, no, forget you, dude. I'm not paying that much. At $50,000, there's a lot of damn cars out there that are a lot better than the Forerunner. Do you like Mustangs? No, nah, uh, not really. What's up, RTD? Uh... Do you like Mustangs? Yeah, not really. I've just never did it. Uh, 750 BMW. I've never been a big BMW guy, to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It's just never been my type of car. They never, like, really look good to me. I know everybody has their own type of cars, and that's totally fine. It's like blondes versus brunettes or whatever. It's just never been my thing, and I've never been a fan of them. I've never been the biggest fan of Mercedes either. I don't know what it is. When I see BMW or Mercedes, this is the first thing that goes through my hand, my mind. They're trying to act like they're rich or they're trying to show off their money. As soon as I see BMW or Mercedes, they're either trying to act like they're rich and they got a lot of money or two, that they do have a lot of money and they have the AMG and they want to show it off. Um, when I take a GTR out, if you're not a car person, you have no idea what it is. They might think, is that a Nissan? But that's about all they ask. They don't know what a GTR is. They don't know. It's not like it has a giant uh, pen, the, the star on the back or it doesn't have the BMW symbol on it. So nobody knows what it is, and they don't really pay that much attention to it. And I kind of like that. And that. But that's the first thing I see when I BMW. I'm like, you're either trying to act like you're rich or you are rich and you just want to be flashy and show it off and uh, that you have money that you can afford it. I don't know. That's just the first thing that comes to my mind. Just like when I see Mustangs, I'm like, this bitch is going to run me over and going to kill me on the side of the street. I don't want that either because usually they're the, the hot-headed guys with the, the bro, yup, bro, we're going to go, bro, that kind of attitude. I don't know what it is about Mustangs, but it's never been my type of car. Come on, bro. We're going to go pound down some beers, bro. Let's go take the Mustang out and we'll go kill some crowd along the way, bro. I just don't know what it is. I just don't. And they're the ones with the loud, obnoxious... They really makes fun of Civics about their cheap exhausts, but when you hear Mustang GT run down, you're like, yep, there goes a Mustang, and I just don't know what it is about that. It just is automatic turn off for me, you know, and it just that's my two cents. You guys can laugh, you guys can make fun of me, but that's just what I think about when I see these cars, and it's just not for me. Audi is to me it's classy car, but you know, they're subdued. Like an S6, S8, uh, you know, whatever S4. They don't look wild and they're not, they don't look like a Type R Civic or anything. They're just, or a WRX. Lots of power, but classy and reserved. You know, if you didn't know what that S symbol was or the RS models, you would have no idea. You're just like, oh, that's an Audi. And I kind of like that about stuff. But hey, you know what? Each their own. That's just my opinion. I wanted to go next weekend and test drive it. I might still go. Clearwater has one, but they, they have, they're asking too much. But hey, go to Clearwater, at least get the test drive, right?
and see if I'm actually interested in the Audi S8. And if I'm not, then you know what? I know I'm going to get Civic. If I damn, then ooh, it's going to be a hard decision there. Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Neil, for saying Happy New Year. I appreciate it. There's no difference between M, A, G, uh, M, G's, a lot of car guys. V12 is fast, Chevy SS. They just don't look good for me, Chevy's. Uh, going to bed at night, uh, get a Mazda 3. Never been a fan of Mazda cars. Never. I don't know what it is. The RX-7 FDs from the early 90s, of course. I like that just like every other guy does. But that's about the only Mazda I've liked. I've never liked other Mazdas. Do you have a scratch and swirl movie video? I have some that have to do with that kind of stuff, especially with like polishes and uh, whatnot. If you want to check out some of the polishes and compound videos, I do have stuff like that. But is it anything directly aimed at the swirls and scratches? I don't know. I don't know. You can just hit the search in my search button, buddy. Have you ever drove a BMW? Uh, no, not that I think to think of, but I'm just, again, it just doesn't do it for me, brother. I would much rather have like an, in, an infinity, honestly. Um, I like those better. Uh, Acura is starting to come make a comeback. I would much rather have an Acura as well. Again, I have a lot of JDM cars. Uh, again, the Prelude, the GTR, my blue Prelude, 100% made in Japan. Kawasaki motorcycle, where is it? It's there somewhere. There it is. The green one, 100% made in Japan. Honda Grum, of for weird reason, is made in like Thailand. Don't know, but that's where they make all the Honda Grums and Honda Monkeys are made in Thailand. But again, Japanese. Of course, the Toyota Sienna, I know it's made in Indiana. It's not made in Japan. Whatever. But uh, JDM for life. So for me, stepping into an S8, it would be stepping out of my safety bounce for sure. Because I do, I've had some American cars when I was younger for just some used cars and they were pieces of garbage. They broke down every couple months. They complete break down another five, six hundred dollars here, another five, six hundred dollars here. So when I hear Audi, I know they're expensive cars and it does scare me. I know German cars are very expensive to fix. Um, what I did talk to my mechanic from the Honda wizard, he, I said, you work on mechanic cars every day for your life. What do you think about Audi? He said, they are honestly a mixed bag. You can have an amazing quality Audi and then you can have a really bad one. He said, it's all about service history. And somebody else that owned an Audi contacted me and said, Chad, whatever you do, check and make sure that car's history was all from Audi. Make sure every single service was at the local Audi dealership. Do not go to anybody else. So every time you get that Audi service, you take it to your local Audi. So you make sure the previous owner, if you're looking at one of these cars, serviced it at Audi every single time. So now that's what I'm doing just because of that. It kind of scared me with the Honda. You know, they're going to be last and they're going to be solid. So again, I would be stepping out of my comfort zone for sure. Uh, uh, Chevy, uh, uh, just keep it. Jerry again, Jeeps. Then you're dealing with cars that aren't qu good quality and that are going to fall apart. I can't deal with that either. Uh, BMW again, not my style of car. Uh, how cold was the weather in Kissimmee? I think overnight we were dipping down in the 50s, if not high 40s. So it was really weird how the just weather just swung so quick. It was crazy. Uh, is the house you're living in, in Islesworth? No, we are not on that level, brother. Islesworth is for people like Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal has this house in uh, Islesworth. Uh, Bubba Watson, the pro golfer, is there. A couple other uh, pro athletes live in Islesworth. Uh, a lot of like business executive CEOs live in Islesworth. We are not on that level. We are not. Because like the minimum house there, I want to say, is probably three to four million dollars in Islesworth. So no, we're not on that level. So no, it's in Windermere, but it's not in Islesworth. You got, you'll see it on the picture. Um, Islesworth home would be, it'd probably be like, you know, eight, nine, 10,000 square foot minimum. And then you start getting into the 15, 20,000 square foot. Like I think Shaq's house, house is for sale right now. Shaq's house, I want to say is like 20,000 square foot. It's huge. You guys can find it. Just look on Zillow and then look in Islesworth, uh, Windermere, Florida, and then set your scales to like 20, 30 million dollars, and you'll find his house. It's there. It'll has it has a basketball court in it, a full on like a massive pool. It has you'll see the Superman bed in there. You know it's Shaq's house. Truck. Uh, we just drove the Tacoma, but it, it was like what it was doing is when my knees, you know, you're driving, you lay your knee against the side of the door kind of area. It was rubbing it raw. I was like, this sucks. I don't know if it was a speaker girl. I just didn't like it. But that's about it. Uh, have you tried the new Meguiar's product? Uh, again, we get back on to where I ordered it about three weeks ago. I finally got an email from them on Friday saying that they had finally shipped it out after three weeks of waiting. I thought my, my credit card was stolen at that point, but I had to wait three weeks. Meguiar's really dropped the ball. Ford Raptor, uh, a little overpowered for me. Don't really need it, and that's just me, but that's just me. Have you tried the new thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be doing uh, products... 
I don't know right now. I don't know. How are taxes in Kissimmee? Uh, for this house, it's like $4,200. Once you go into Orange County, which is the Orlando County, which is like literally 10 minutes up the road that way, eh, the prices will go up by probably about 25 to 35% instantly just because you stepped foot into Orange County. And uh, its taxes are way more there. Um, not like California taxes, but the taxes significantly jump up, just jumping into Orange County. Um, that's about it. 2019 has been pretty good so far. Been flying by. We're already planning for our next cruise. We're going, we always go on a cruise in the end of March for my son's birthday. He'll be turning three years old this year, as a matter of fact. He's finally starting to talk. He's starting to say a lot of words now. You know, they're not properly pronounced, but he's really starting to try and talk and say some words now, which has really been nice. Um, so, we're, of course, we're taking him on a cruise. We're going, I think it's the Norwegian Bliss at the end of June. No, I'm sorry, at the end of uh, March sometime. And uh, so that should be a lot of fun. We always go in for a birthday. We take him on a birthday cruise. So we're going on that. We're planning that. We're going to go see my dad in Illinois, I think, in February. I'm going to try and visit 303 or try and visit Turtle Wax while I'm there. We'll see. Um, they've been both invited me up. I just have to get up to Illinois. That's about it. Have you tried Black Magic Metal Polish? Uh, I don't think I have. But if you want a really good polish that you can get up at Walmart, either get Eagle Ones, Wadding One. It's in a silver container. Or get uh, Mother's Mag Cleaner. That stuff is amazing. You will love it. I think I have it down here, but if you need a metal polish, it's really good. Also, the Turtle Wax one. Here, I got your Turtle Wax one right here. This one, really, really good. Chrome polish and rust remover, really, really good one as well. But, yeah, uh, I'd say uh, Mother's is really good. I don't know where the Mother's one is. I know it's in there, but you know what I'm talking about. It comes in a little cup. Amazing product. Amazing problem. product. Uh, little man is asleep right now. He's been having some issues going to the bathroom and, uh, we've had him give him tons of laxatives and he's finally, he finally went some tonight, but he went for like a week or so without ever going to the bathroom. And of course, as you know, that's not very good and it can be dangerous to, uh, children not going to the bathroom. And, uh, so we've been pumping him full of laxatives and he's like, his butt was raw. I mean, raw. So he's, he's finally knocked out. He did go some and he knocked out with her. He's, she's in sleep already. Cause you know, you guys, she has to be at her medical clinic seeing patients at 7 15 tomorrow morning. So She's already asleep. I'm up. I'm the only one up right now. I've been playing a lot of uh, Call of Duty Blackout. Speaking of that, I had I ran into a random person in a group. I was just in random uh, Blackout game, right? In quads, if you play Call of Duty, they have a game called Blackout. It's a bladder royale. And I went in quad, a quads match. So you have four people on a team. And I ran into a random one. And we were talking. We were playing. Ends up the guy is a subscriber of mine, which is really, really cool. He was like, so how's your YouTube channel going? And I, of course, I never mentioned, I don't go on to YouTube and mention that. And he's like, so how's your YouTube channel doing? I'm like, good, good. You know, and I didn't say anything about it. And he's like, yeah, dude, I've been watching you for a while. And I'm like, whoa, you know, because that was just weird that you're in a random game. And he just happens to recognize me. And he's like, dude, you're whatchamacallit. I'm like, yeah, that's me. He's like, you got your YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, that's me. So it was actually pretty cool that he actually ran into me. Just a random uh, blackout game. So that was really fun. So if you're on here, shout out to you, brother. I remember you. I've, uh, we'll have to play again sometime. Because I think he added me as a friend on the, um, I was playing on Xbox, actually, when I played that. It wasn't on my PlayStation. Normally I play PlayStation, but I bought it for Xbox because I was bored. And I wanted to play it again a lot more and level it up. So that's generally what I've been doing lately. Just being a bum lately. Tell us about that foam soap. Sure, I will at least show you it, but I have not tried it out, so please bear with me, brother. I cannot give you a fair review of it. So basically, it's Turtle Wax's Ice Snow Foam. You guys remember the ice line that came in the blue bottles? Well, they're, they're changing up the lines a little bit here. So this is still their ice line here. It's a hybrid. It's ultra-rich foam conditioners blended with bio, biodegradable detergents, safely cleans, and preserved paint finishes. So it's good for hand, designed both for a hand wash or a spray wash, meaning a foam cannon. It has the foam cannon. So we'll be trying this out. It's pH balance cleaners, preserves wax and sealant, so obviously it won't strip your wax. And uh, it smells like bubblegum, and it truly does smell like bubblegum. It's an amazing smell. But I haven't tested it out yet. It's a little watered down, but again, let me give you some time to see. I'll actually, I'll, I'll read it off right now what it takes. Uh, hand wash is one ounce per gallon of water. Okay, that's fair enough, one ounce per gallon. And we'll actually see what uh, it actually does there. So again, I'm gonna have this out sometime this week, whether it's Wednesday, like I usually do, or a Saturday video. That's when I usually do my reviews. Uh, let me see how things go. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to record it. Now I'll actually be able to get edited and uploaded for Wednesday morning. That's usually my game plan. I usually, I try and stay a couple days ahead, especially during the heavy season when all the new products are out. I usually have multiple videos recorded, but they just gotta put them all together and upload them to YouTube, which you know takes a little bit of time. Not a lot, because I don't do massive editing. I just kind of, 
uh, put it all together, put what I want in there, you know, uh, links or anything like that. And I just kind of upload it as is. I'm not trying to be a professional YouTuber. I just want to give my fair and balanced reviews and I just have fun doing it. Uh, how's the HOA been? Oh, speaking of HOA, Cody. So we cut down the one palm tree. The very, I'm shit you not, the very next day, Cody, we got another letter in the mail saying the back patio had to be pressure washed. I'm like, Jesus, God, and have mercy. The the week before, we got that our back flower bed needed mulch in it, and it can't look like that. I'm like, look like what? So I went and bought a couple of bags of mulch and just dumped them in the backyard. I was like, whatever, bro. I put them all around the bushes in the backyard. I'm like, good enough for me, bro. I'm not going to touch anything more. We just got another one in the mail today. And this is probably what's really starting to get my wife pissed off because it's literally every week now or every couple of days we get another letter from the HOA. It's getting ridiculous. They've raised the HOA fees again for the second time in the last two years. It's now $165 a month to live here with HOA. And we don't get shit out of it other than a basic security. Uh, there's security at night. We have gates to come in the neighborhood. And they just kind of maintain it and all. And they put up new street lights. Other than that, we don't get jack out of, this, out of here. And they keep raising the prices of the HOA every year now. And we're like... Screw this, we're getting harassed. But anyways, now the back balcony area has cracks in the little uh, concrete pillars that hold up the railing. They want us to fix that. I'm like, what the hell are you doing that close to our house where you're seeing if there's cracks in these little, the columns, you know, are like what, three feet tall that hold up the railing? What the hell are you doing that close to my house that you're seeing cracks in the damn uh, concrete pillars that hold up the poles? That w just it's mind blowing. This is how bad they're getting, and, and I think this is what's really pushing my wife to say, "Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get out of this neighborhood and just leave." She only wants a no HOA, so we're look, we've looked at a lot of homes with no HOAs, and a lot of ones that are very minimal HOAs. That's what we we talked to fellow the neighbors when we've been there. They come out and say, "Hey, what are you doing? You're looking at that house?" And we're like, "Yeah, that's awesome." We go talk to them about it, and uh, it's it's out of control here, Cody. It's gotten absolutely out of control. We feel like almost at this point now that. They don't want us in the neighborhood. They don't want young people in the neighborhood. They just want a bunch of old farts in this neighborhood and that this is a way of getting us out of the neighborhood because right across the street over there, a guy that I guess was trying to get on the community board here for the neighborhood, he has a dead palm tree and it's bid dead and that damn thing is still up there. But we kept getting notes every single week. So don't get me started on how bad the HOA is getting in our neighborhood. And I think that's why we are now, my wife said, I'm done with it. We're looking at new homes and I don't want to be with HOA anymore. So I was like, okay, your money, we're leaving. So that's what's been going on. So yeah, HOA fun. That's, well, that's how it is here, buddy. Uh, how do you even see your backyard? Well, Logan, I live on a country club. So right behind my house is the first hole of the golf course. So according to the HOA rules, they're allowed to go in our backyard. They're allowed anything that is outside of the house, they are allowed to inspect. And we have to abide by the rules. We had to sign a big old clause when we moved in. Well, the first five years we lived here, like we're going on six and a half years now. So the first five and a half years we've, we've lived here, and nobody bothered us. We just mowed it and kept it all clean, trimmed the hedges every couple months, made sure it was decently nice. Didn't do anything crazy. We're not throwing parties. We're not banging music or anything like that. And we left us, everybody alone. Nobody bothered us. Well, then the company changed and the, the leadership in the community changed last uh, January. The prices went up by $15 a month and they just started throwing shit at us every single week. And I, I, I kind of kept it away from my wife. I just kind of kept throwing them away because I figured, yeah, the HOA is not going to do anything. And thankfully, they don't do anything. But they said they can hold our deed where we can't sell our house until we uh, fix everything. But I guess in part of the deed is saying that they have the right to walk anywhere on our property they want. And they can inspect it. And as long as it's, it's visible from the outside, have the street, that they can tell us that we have to correct it. Anything inside the house, they can't tell us anything. But anything that's outside the house, they can. They, so they walk around the entire house and they're nitpicking our houses. I'm like, what the hell is your problem? I mean, one time it was it was moss growing on a bush back there, fucking moss. Like really, you're bitching about moss that? So I had to go in the back in the back bushes. It was an evergreen plant that had moss growing on it, and I had to pull out almost all the moss I could get. And I just said, well, I don't know what more you want me to do. So I just pulled out all the moss that I could even reach. And I was like, screw it, I'm done. And that's what I did. I just put it in the bag and I threw it out there with the lawn debris. And I'm like, don't know what you want, but it's gotten so bad this year. So we're almost at the point where it's time for us to leave. And we almost feel discriminated. Like, hey, we're young in the neighborhood. You don't want us here. You can't get us. You're not going to evict us because we pay more than our payment every single month. You know, we, so we're never going to be foreclosed on. But I'm like, what's going on? So that's where we're kind of starting to think now. 
in Miami, Miami, no way. I was born in Fort Lauderdale. We lived in Hollywood until I was like nine in 1980s. Uh, we left in like 1989, and uh, it was going downhill by then. And we don't know anybody left down there anymore. It's it's too expensive. So I'd never go down to Miami. Uh, we just got over a year now. Yeah, dude, time flies, doesn't it? It really does fly. You should buy a Shaq's house. No, Adam, I think Shaq wants 20 million for his house. You guys should look it up on Zillow right now. Look in this town of Windermere, Florida. Just punch in. I think it has to be. I think it's right around 20 million. He's asking for the house. Just punch in like the, the settings, punch it in from like 15 to like $30 million and punch in Windermere, you'll find it. It's a huge home, it's a blue roof on it, it's like the Orlando Magic Colors, and you'll see the bed is huge, the bed's a big circle, and you'll see the, sh the big Superman symbol on it, and you'll see the Shaq uh, jerseys on the wall. You'll know immediately that's Shaq's house, and it's up for sale. I think he lives down permanently in LA or something, I don't know where he lives, but I guess I think it's LA. So this was the original house he's had since the 90s when he played the Orlando Magic, and he's just he's kept it all these years. Oh, subscribe for two years. Bro, I've been subscribed for way longer, bro. Uh, Shaxazilla Price just dropped 17.55. There you go. So it's easy to find. That's generally the, the town we'd be living in. Not right there in downtown. It was like in the northern end of Windermere, but still, you're in Windermere. No, I don't regret Greg getting rid of the 370Z because the 370Z was the down payment I needed in order to buy the GTR. It was a great car, but because I had my son, I stopped driving it. Literally, it had so much dust on the car because I wasn't even driving it anymore. Because, you know, you're supposed to put him in the back seat. I did put him in the front seat of the Z many times, but because it has no back seat. But that was the reason that I got the GTR, was just because of the fact that I needed the actual back seat. So did I regret selling it? No, because I got... A better car. Is the 370Z bad? No, it's an amazing car, and I think you'll love it if you buy it. Don't drive it in the rain. The things that are squirrely is sin in the rain. They have are terrible in the rain. The things get you see so many guys in the Z communities, I'm still in those Facebook groups, that have wrecked their car, slam it into the side of the wall in the interstate, something like that, because they lose control of those things in the rain. I don't know what it is. It's the scariest car I've ever driven in the rain. You'll just be driving, the whole back end starts doing this. Oh shit! And you just get off the gas because you're like, "What the heck?" And, I, and nothing. I guess for you Northerners, it would be like hitting black ice. Uh, it is just freaking crazy. You you have you see, there's nothing on the road other than just raining, and the whole back end just comes loose, and you just start sloshing all over. So many many guys in the rain total off their Z's, whether it's 350 or 370Z's. And I so I don't recommend it during the rain. If you are have to get driving in the rain. Drive it slow because they're very out of control in the rain. I hate it. But other than that, it's a beautiful car. It has timeless looks. 20 years from now, the 370Z will still be sexy. Drop dead gorgeous. So it's like the 300Zs. I still think they look good. 350s, nah, they didn't really do it for me. But the 300s look good. The Supras, Mark IV Supra, amazing looking looks. And you get that. RX-7. It's in that line where in 20 years from now, it'll be a classic car that all the guys will want. And I get ready for it. It will, because it'll start going up in value then. Uh, is your son talking yet? Yes, Adam, he's starting to say a lot of words now. A lot of words. They're not, they sometimes aren't pronounced correctly, Adam, but he is saying a lot of words, which is very, very nice. Uh, we're starting to finally be like, ah, oh, he's starting to say some words, because I talked to my dad about it. He said, I said a few words here and there when I was two years old, but most of the time when I was hanging with other kids, they said I never spoke. And then I really started talking full sentences and everything when I was three. So I'm like, okay, he's a couple months away from being three years old, and now he's saying a lot of words, but he's not linking them together in sentences or anything. Uh, he'll just say, you know, if he wants milk, he's like, milk, milk, or you know, red, red, red. You know, he's pointing the car around. I'm like, yeah, it's a red car. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, he'll do stuff like that. And you know, so it's really starting to come together now, but. Uh, it took him a long time to talk, but you know what? It, that's fine. You know, he's, he's following, I guess, my footsteps, and if he follows me and he gets like straight A's in school, who cares, right? That's right. An 800 horsepower Hellcat. Things squats. Yeah, dude, they're really cool cars. Uh, I thought about getting a, a, a Charger Hellcat, but I was like, mm, it's just not my thing. You know what I mean? But I, I know where you're coming from. Um, the one thing that scares me about any Dodge or whatever cars. The quality. The quality is horrific. The resale value is terrible on those cars. And it just scares me to want to buy one. Like the build quality is so far behind Japanese cars. And I'm just, you know, even German cars are very, very high end. But when they break, they're very expensive to fix. But their quality for the most part is very high. 
And I like that. Where Japanese, you know, are going to be reliable cars, going to last for you forever. And uh, with minor maintenance, where, uh, you know, American cars, especially like Dodge or any of those, have really like Dodge Fiat and all that branding. They're horrible, horrible quality. They're some of the worst in the business. Your Jeeps and everything. And I, I don't want to spend that kind of money and then damn things breaking down on me every couple months. And, oh, there's another couple thousand dollars. Fuck that. No way, man. I want to have a car that I can enjoy. And I, you know what I've done to this car in the last, I've literally owned it two years now. I've put new oil in it. That's it. I granted, I don't put a lot of miles on it, but that's all I've done in two years. No other thing in the service, no brakes, nothing. I've put, I've uh, put 4,500 miles on it and all I've done is just put oil in it. And I have never had a single problem. Uh, I've, I've just put it on the charger, the triple charger and let it charge it all the way up. It's all I've ever done if it sits here for very long. Nothing other than that, it runs great and I like that. I got my bike and I was talking to him and thinking about getting a bike. He said, the next thing you know, you got one. Oh yeah, dude, for sure, man. Yeah, I got a bike. What's in the pink bottle? Sorry, Johnny, I missed you. The Johnny, the pink thing is Turtle Wax's new ice snow foam wash. I do apologize, Johnny, I didn't see your comment. Again, I, I get off into these little rabbit thing trails and I want to actually talk about subjects, but that's what it is. So it's meant to be used in the foam can as well as a two bucket method. Johnny, I will be getting it out this week, so I do uh, just keep an eye on this. I will have this out. The other pink bottle is from Limitless. I will be starting to give away products here. Be ready, guys. I'm going to be giving away a double set of a set of products every single time I do giveaways. Just pay attention to that, guys. Get ready for it. These, these giveaways are coming. I bought, purchased a bunch of Limitless Car Care stuff, and we'll be giving it away. What year is the GTR Oscar? It's 2013. I bought it. Let's see. I bought it in January of 2017. So now I've owned it essentially two years exactly now. Sometime, sometime around now I bought it two years ago. And I only owe 12000 left on it. She will be paid off around September of this year, maybe uh, July, if I can pay it off a little faster. That's my goal is to right around July have it paid off is what I'm hope shooting for because I'd really like to get a four-door car. It's just turning to be a pain in the ass with my son getting him in the back seat of these two-door cars. I don't want to get rid of my two-door cars, but you can understand where I'm going with that. I'm like, I just want a four-door. I got spoiled with the minivan where it's just like, open the sliding door, slap them in there. There's tons of room. I'm not fighting with doors and then just hit the button and it just shuts back again. It's I've gotten so spoiled with that that now I want it. My wife's like, you should just get a minivan. And I'm like, no. And no, you know, maybe have you seen have you seen the fake pictures or the uh, demo pictures of a of a supposed Honda Odyssey Type R? I was like, oh my god, oh my god, make it make it do it, Honda. I know you have no balls, Honda. I know you don't have the balls to do it. But if you do it, I would buy the minivan because you'd be a, you'd be the cool dad, minivan dad, with a you know, amazing fast minivan. It would be just so much fun. How about we were on the turnpike? I'll give you guys another uh, story with the minivan. I want to say it was. Was it last weekend? So we were coming down the turnpike. We were heading back to the Kissimmee. And I got around a guy, and he was going really slow. He was doing like 65 to 70 in the, the fast lane. And I'm like, get the hell out of my way. So I'm flashing him, like, get over. You're not even doing the speed limit. Get out of the left lane. It's a state law in Florida. You can't be in the left lane. You have got to get out of the lane. Otherwise, you can get stopped for holding up traffic. So I pass him, and he decided he didn't want me to pass. This is, it was like some infinity Q something. I don't know what it was. It was a four-door sedan. He decided to floor it. Well, he didn't expect me to be in the minivan that has 300 horsepower. Uh, I floored it too. I was like, bitch. I outran him in the minivan. I looked down and we were doing 110 miles an hour in the minivan. I was leaving him. I put down the window and went, bye. <laughs> I just left his ass. He was, he was trying to go. He, he, and I just... Just walked right away from him. I couldn't believe it. I was laughing my ass off. Even my wife, you know, it's my wife's minivan. I figured she's going to be yelling at me right now. She just started laughing. She's like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm telling you, people under, under, underestimate the minivan so bad. But the douchebag was doing 65 in the left lane, and I just wanted to get around him. And he did. He was pissed that I was trying to get around him. One of those kind of people. And I'm like, you're doing five under the speed limit in the fast lane on the turnpike. You need to get out of the road. You know, like I do, as soon as I make a pass, I get back over, you know what you're supposed to do. And uh, it was pretty funny. He couldn't keep up with the minivan. So that was a good little story there. Uh, I am going to get my uh, wife a minivan. Her car got bumped the other day. Well, it was in the parking lot. Somebody backed into it. So we're going to get her a, a dual dash cam for it because, of course, now we have no insurance for it. So I'm going to try and buff it out and get out the rest of the scratches. But it's going to have scratches now forever because somebody did hit run on her car. It has white marks all over that gray van. And you're just like on the front bumper. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? 
when I told her, I said, if we would have had a dash cam, we wouldn't have this problem. We would just be like, oh, there's the record. Here we go. Call the police. And they, you know, they go and nail them for it, you know, for a hit and run because it, it's just, it sucks, you know? Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on the new upcoming Supra? Overpriced and not pretty. I guarantee you it's going to be very slow, Jose. It only has 330 horsepower. The 370Z has had 330 horsepower since 2009. And it's going to be overpriced because it's a Supra. Get ready. I bet they priced it at about 55 to 60 grand. Their, the reviews, when they hit, are going to dog the shit out of that car because they're going to be like, it's overpriced and it's slow. Mark my words. They're going to re dog that how bad it is. They're going to be like, oh, it's cool, a Supra. It should have never been named the Supra. It could have been named anything else. It didn't matter what they named it. It could have been Toyota's new sports car. Totally fine. But there's no way it should be called a Supra without living up to that greatness. The Supra twin turbo had 300 horsepower back in the early 90s, and you're only going to put 330 horsepower in it now? When the 370Z comes with 332 horsepower? Underpowered, overpriced garbage. And they had to co-design it with BMW? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's going to be, no, it's done. It's, it's dead out of the door gate, just like the Acura NSX. As soon as people saw it, they were like, ew, it's ugly, and it's a hybrid, and immediately it killed it. The sales are pathetic on the Acura. I bet this will be the last year they make it. People were shocked that they kept, that they were actually rolling it into 2019, the NSX. People thought it was done for. They don't sell. Nobody wants them. It didn't live up to the true name of the original NSX, and it's like $160,000, $170,000. Um, just make a damn twin turbo V6, like the old body design of the 90s, kind of refreshed it for an upper, uh, newer time, and make it a twin turbo V6 like the GTR, and no hybrid crap, and sell it for around 100 grand. That's all people wanted, but no, let's be all hipster and stuff, and I think it cost Acura, just like I think this uh, Supra is going to cost Toyota heavily. You'll get your early adopters that are like, I got a Supra. But then the reviews are going to start coming out dogging it, how slow it is, how overpriced it is. Don't go buy it. And then it'll just the sales will go done. And I really think that's what's going to happen. You guys can quote me on that one. If it does good, more power to Toyota, but I just don't see it. People want been begging for the FRS to have like 250 horsepower for years. Guess what? Toyota doesn't listen. And the Toyota the FRS barely sells anymore. Well, now it's called the GT86. Same deal. And they, they don't really sell. So... You've got to listen to your people. If you don't listen to them, you might as well be done. You know what I mean? Uh, thoughts on Rolex? Uh, I guess they're, they're nice watches, probably overpriced. You're buying a name just like a BMW Mercedes. You're just buying the name. Uh, that happened to the NSX. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I know what you're talking about. Granted, I have no problem buying them. But these are just my – off the top, when you, when you hear me on YouTube, these are my own personal things, Whatever, whether it's review of Turtle Wax – Limitless car care, or we're talking about future cars. These are my own personal opinions. And just based on, remember I was a history major in college. Based on the history of things, Toyota has a, a history of not building cars that people want. Um, uh, example, the FRS, people were like, that's fine at 200 horsepower, but it needs to have like 250 horsepower. They have yet, it's been out since what, 2012? Now it's called the GT86, and they've yet to up the horsepower. And that's all people are asking for, more horsepower. And they're like, no, nah, it's fine. Um, the Supra, why couldn't they make it without BMW? I'm sure it costs more and they're saving money by co thing, but the BMW is selling for right around 60 grand, 55, 60 grand, the BMW equivalent, the Z4. So, you know, the Supra is going to be 55, 60 grand. And for who here wants to pay 55 grand for a 330 horsepower? Who, who, anybody? You see what I'm saying? When a 370Z loaded is like 40 grand and it actually has two more horsepower. And the damn thing's been out. And now Nissan's new Z is going to be announced here at Tokyo Auto Show. They've already promised. Nissan's promised it. And everybody's expecting the 400Z. Uh, it's going to have the, the twin turbo engine of the, um, the Q, the red, the red Q. And it's going to have 400 horsepower. So uh, $40,000 or, you know, what am I calling? And that's essentially what, the way I see it. It's going to flop. You'll have your people that are the hardcore Toyota enthusiasts that will buy it. But then you're going to have the reviews and you're going to see people being like... Nah, it's not for me. I can do a lot more with 55000 and they're right. The, uh, you can get what? I get M3 for that much money, and M3 will probably smoke it out of the water. I mean, 
that's just my thoughts just coming off because I was hyped too. I'm like, oh, sweet, a Supra. And I'm like, no, not a Supra. Hybrid, no, or whatever. Slow ass car, no, no thanks. Just like the Acura NSX. Ooh, new ass NSX. Ooh, not NSX. That's not even NSX. If you get used to something for so damn long and then you completely deviate from it and then you push the price up, nobody wants that. And that's essentially, I think, what happened to the NSX and it killed the NSX. It doesn't look like an NSX. It's a hybrid and it's way overpriced. Why would you not get the GTR? Oh, well, maybe the NSX is a tad bit faster. Well, for $70,000, I'm going to do a hell of a lot of mods to the GTR to smoke that thing. You know, I mean, think about it. What could you do with $70,000 in mods to the GTR? That's essentially like two GTRs, right? Uh, you could probably have well over 2,000 horsepower in it. Easy, easy. You could probably have a whole other brand new car as your daily and keep the GTR. It's just, to me, it was, it was too experimental and uh, it flopped hard. But, you know, hey, I'm not looking to buy one, so it doesn't matter for me, I guess. Uh, what's a good degreaser? Oh, I've used a couple good ones. Uh, tell you the truth, Chemical Guys Orange Degreaser is amazing. Masterson's degreaser is amazing. What else have I used? There was one more that I used was really, really good, but my brain is like right now because it's, what is it, midnight or something like that. But I know for a fact Chemical Guys Orange Degreaser is awesome. Masterson's degreaser is awesome. I know I have one more, but oh, it's going to bug me. I don't remember it right now. Uh, Turtle Wax says, Hyundai is not bad. Aaron, if you haven't been in a Hyundai in a long time, you need to get in one. Uh, especially like the new Hyundai N, the Veloster N, the 275 horsepower, and it's only $26,000. I mean, you're not going to find a car that's going to give you that much horsepower for only $26,000. I'm sorry. And it, it's it's set up by what Albert Bierman from BMW M Division and the other guy from uh, Mercedes that came over from AMG. Um, but Albert Bierman is the one that led it up. I mean, the, it, the Hyundai is going to be slapping the shit out of people in the next 10 years. You are you're going to eat your words so bad. They're going to start outselling Hondas and Toyotas in 10 years. Not every car. I don't I'm not saying they're going to be the next Corolla, but I, they might start making headway into other whether it's SUVs or whether it's um uh, like cars in general. Um they already said the Genesis is coming back out with a new coupe and it's going to be uh, uh twin turboed. So get ready for that. It's going to be over 400 horsepower. I mean, you're going to be shocked. I mean, you're starting to see them coming out now with some amazing cars. Uh, I think in 10 years, you're going to be starting to see it really change. And this is like getting in, in the, like the first days of a, a new company. Let's say you got in the beginning of the Google stock when Google stock was, you know, like $15, $20 a share. Now, how much is Google stocks? You know, you guys know what I'm saying now. This is where they're at now. They have so much potential. They're getting better and better. They keep hiring these high end people from other companies, buying them out and saying, hey, you can have full charge. You do what you want. We know what you did at the BMW M division. Do it here. And I think that's what's happening. And again, if you are in the mood for a little hot hatch and you don't have a lot of money for a Civic Type R, go buy the Hyundai Veloster. And I think you'll be very happy, very happy for what you get for the money. Uh, the new Super uh, needs to have, uh, I wouldn't say the Super needs to have 600 horsepower, but I would like to see minimum 450. At $55,000, there are so many cars with over 400 horsepower. And I think it's going to come out at sticker price between 55 and 60 grand. I'll be shocked if it's below 50,000 starting for the Supra because the BMW M4 equivalent, which is going to be the sister car, is, is right at 60,000. So if Toyota rolls out with a Supra at anything more than 60,000, it's already dead, dead on the arrival. Uh, I will be shocked if it actually stickers at below 50,000. I will be completely shocked. I don't care how good it is on the track. It is not going to be very fast, and most people want the power. And uh, it's like the FRS. They say, oh, it's great on the track, but it's not fast. It doesn't have the power. And in today's world, like the Infiniti, or whatchamacallit, the Q50 Red Sport or something like that, 400 horsepower. Uh, you can get Chevy Camaros, Mustangs with over 400 power, horsepower for under, way under 50 grand. I mean, you know, you guys see where I'm going here with it, and it's just like, pfft. So that's my thoughts on it. Again, I'm just a regular Joe Blow here that makes some YouTube videos. Whoop de doo. Who cares about this guy with two, two cents to his name, that kind of thing. And uh, these companies usually, just like if you guys understand, most management have no idea about you, what you do for your job. They're going by, well, according to the book, it says this. I see it all the time in my job. They have never, ever, ever done the job. So uh, especially these new guys that come in there, well, according to the book, you're supposed to do it this way. It doesn't work that way, bro. Who made the book? Well, so-and-so, I guarantee he never did the job. 
And you know, the, she gets some of these upper management to come in here and try and force you to do the job this way. So you're like, that's gonna be 10 times longer. I'm telling you, you do it Ned, this way or not. And because they've never done the job and you're like, all right, I'll do it exactly what you want. It takes three or four times as long. After a week of doing it their way, according to the book, they just let you go back to doing it your way because you're actually saving them money. And the sad thing is a lot of these companies now aren't listening to where the people who are actually doing the job or are actually uh, buying the cars. They're not listening anymore. They're listening to stockholders, whatever the shareholder says, uh, you need to make me more money. How can you make me more money as a shareholder? That's all they care about anymore. And I see it with my company every single day of the year. Uh, cut, 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 cut. And then you can't get the job done because you don't have enough people or whatever. And uh, then it's just screaming and yelling at the people that you do have. And it just it makes into a very toxic environment to work in. And that really sucks. And I think that's what's going on with the car industry is that they don't want to listen to it. It's one of them that doesn't want to listen. Their ears are shut. They don't care. They don't want to listen anymore. The 90s was when they were shining. The 2000s, they started to not care. In the 2010s, it's all about who gives a crap what they think. Let's just make a condo box. It's Corollas because Corollas sell 500,000 units a year. Um, they don't care about the what we as enthusiasts want because enthusiasts make up this much of the percentage of the market. And sad to say, it is true. You know, they might they might sell if they're lucky. They might sell fifteen thousand supers the first year, and I think that's a good number to shoot for. And that still is nothing compared to again Corolla's that sell five hundred thousand units worldwide, or just in the United States every single year. So, uh, where do you put your money? You're going to put it in the cars that sell tons. So, oh well, if they don't buy it, bro, it doesn't matter anyways. Even if they bought 50000 it's still nothing compared to what we make from the Corolla lineup or, you know, the uh, how many Highlanders we sell, bro, or how many Tacomas we sell. You see what I'm saying? So, a Supra, I think it's just going to be their little car. There you go. What's your favorite place to travel? So, getting back to other stuff, I have traveled, I'd say, half the world now. And I, I used to love going to Germany every single year. I've been to Germany like seven times. I think, uh, especially southern Germany and Bavaria, where the Alps are, is some of the prettiest scenery I've ever seen before. I've been through Austria and the Alps. I just, I think it's gorgeous over there. The people are genuinely so nice in Germany. They, they just accept you. I mean, it just doesn't matter where you come from. Well, as far as I know, they don't care. But I mean, they're just the general nicest people in the world. They're very like, very quiet and reserved. Very almost like strict. Like their job is everything. They're very strict about everything. Like. Uh, the way you drive, you better not be texting. You better not be doing this. Like everything was is so, mm, you know, like follow the rules, bitches. Follow the rules. Like nobody goes off straight. Like Americans just do whatever the hell they want. The Germans, they're just, I see them as just everything has to be perfection at all time. And it was, it's a different type of society, but um, they are some of the nicest people I've ever seen in my life. And they're genuinely friendly. And I love the scenery of the Southern Alps, but you know, I haven't been there in a while because I started dating her and she couldn't have the money to go with me. So I, I stopped kind of going to Germany and that sucks. So I have a lot of German friends in Germany, but I haven't been able to fly over. So it kind of sucks. Other than that, I think Alaska is very pretty. I've been to Alaska on two cruises now. It's really nice up there. Very pretty, really big mountains. And uh, I enjoy that too. Yep, it is about the bottom line. You are right about that expert for sure. If the Super had the hell cut 700, it probably would be unless it had all-wheel drive. Like the GTR is all-wheel drive, so it really hooks up and goes. Um, you know, you don't really have the problem. But a super real drive, I think a sweet spot for that super, it would be around 450 horsepower. Uh, it wouldn't push too much more than that. Maybe 500 if it was like a special model, like a GT or like a, a Type R model. Maybe right 500 horsepower. But again... I think at that price point, they'd probably have to be creep up around the eighty to ninety thousand dollar range, and I don't think their Toyota is ready for that kind of investment yet. And I don't think they can make that with a BMW engine. They'd have to have their own engine, like the Yamaha when Yamaha built their engines, when they co-designed their engines. And uh, I think that's what they'd have to honestly do. But um, at this point, I just think it's going to be a complete failure. Um, it'll sell. The, the, you'll have the the guys that are super diehards are going to go out and buy it. But then they're probably going to try and flip it really quick for some quick money or they'll just let it sit there and they'll start going, eh, it's kind of a boring car. My other, my other car is faster, so I'm just going to I'm gonna sell the Super. And you're just, you're just going to see them sit on lots like the Acuras do right now. They just sit on lots. Even the GTRs right now, they don't sell anymore. The GTRs only sold, I think, last year. They only moved like 1,000 units all year because, they're, they're one, they're so expensive. And two, they're so long in the tooth design-wise. I mean, they already admitted they're working on the next GTR. I said it's going to be the, I quote, they say, he said it's going to be the fastest brick ever made. Because a lot of people don't like the design, but it's so, it's made because of the aerodynamic. 
but it said it's going to be the fastest brick ever designed. They are working on the next GTR, the R36. But, uh, you know, it's been make in the same design since 2009 now. So 10 years with the same body design for the most part. And uh, people just aren't buying them anymore. They just, um, you know, if they're lucky to move like, you know, 50 units a month throughout all North America. And uh, so I think that's where the Super would be at. So I, that's why I'm saying the Super probably needs to be around the sweet spot, around 45,000. Uh, 450 horsepower and keep it around. If you're at 450 horsepower, maybe you can get away with 60,000, 65,000 for like a loaded version, but I wouldn't push it beyond that price wise. I think it would just be uh, too much because, again, then you get to the where you get the Hellcats and stuff like that for 65 to 70 thousand dollars, and those have 700 and something horsepower. So Toyota has to stay in that really sweet spot there where they can't go too crazy. Um, 22 Corolla, not my thing, Corolla. We're going to Vancouver, Canada and spring bike. Uh, Vancouver is very pretty. I've been on a, a cruise there one time. It's so pretty there. Lots of Chinese people. I do remember that there's Chinese people everywhere. I guess they're all moving from China to the, that part of Canada. But other than that, it, it just, it's just really, really pretty. The mountains are there. It's just like, wow, when you see it. And so I highly recommend, I think you're really gonna like Vancouver there. It was really, really pretty. Does cold weather have any effect on buffing out your car? Not that I've noticed. Um, usually hot weather has the effect, like the wax will dry a lot faster in hot, hot weather. So you have to buff it off a lot faster. You can't let it sit as long. So you might want to do like half of a hood at a time because it's going to, the heat here in Florida will make it set so fast that you have to get it off immediately. Otherwise it's going to be uh, breaking your arm, trying to get the stuff off. Um, if you had to stick with one brand, can you get any auto parts store for all your detailing products? Will you be? What do you mean by that, Atula? Um, what do you mean by one brand you can get from? Are you talking about like uh, companies that sell for We're talking Meguiar's, Mother stuff. If you could get it from a store, I would probably say Meguiar's because Meguiar's is a very good all around company. Maybe not the tip top, tippity toppy best, but it is a very solid product company. And I think they make some of the best that you're going to pick up in like Walmarts or stuff like that. Uh, Grillo's Garage is also a, a very good company, but the only place I've ever seen is like Advanced Auto Parts and AutoZone. You're not going to find them in Walmart. So I'd say probably those two right there. Mother's is also very good. I'd say Mother's is about neck and neck with Meguiar's, but Meguiar's has more presence and more stores. So if that helps you out any. Well, any of those three right there that you could pick up locally would probably be the best. What do you do? Uh, where do I get it? So, Choi, I got my microfiber towels. They're chemicalized microfiber towels. I'll show it to you right here, buddy. It's a dirty one from when I made that video the other day. Uh, this is actually from Amazon. I bought them off Amazon. They're really, really big, as you can see. I oh, hope you guys can see how really big it is. It's massive. It's like 24 inches long or something like that. So, it's like two feet long. And you buy like a whole stack of these for, I think it's $12.99. You just search off Amazon. Search chemicalized microfiber towels on Amazon. And you can still see these, and they're like twelve ninety nine for I think it's like six of them or uh, ten of them. It's something like that. It's great, great microfibers, really fluffy, really, really soft. I love them, and they don't roll up on you like the cheap ass microfiber towels you get at Walmart that roll up on your hand. They don't roll up on you. Highly recommended. Highly recommend. I would definitely say that. We're going to stay for three days. Oh, you'll love that, man. Uh, what company? Uh, there you go. What do you prefer, traditional clay bar? I like the newer stuff a lot more, Tula, just because it's easier to use. Uh, you don't have to keep kneading it over, folding it over on each other. Uh, the new one, you just keep spraying and keep going. If, hypothetically, you were accidentally lose it and drop it out of your hands and don't throw it on the ground, you don't have to throw it away. Like a clay bar, you're going to have to throw that sucker away because, you know, those little pebbles and stuff that get in there, then you're going to be scratching the car's paint where you just go and wash it off with water and you just keep on going. That's the good thing. It is the future. I would definitely say the nano skin style. Whatever company you, you decide that you like, Rio's, maybe you want to get a mother's version, maybe you want to get Eagle One version, whatever brand you go, go with, it's definitely the future and I like it a lot better. If you left detailing projects untouched in the garage, I'd say a couple of years before they really go bad. I mean, so there's a guy, a detailing pro, you guys probably know him. He's uh, he used to make tons of videos for Auto Geek. He still works for Auto Geek down in South Florida, but they don't make videos for them anymore, sadly. But you can learn a lot from him. He has a collection of historical uh, detailing things that he keeps in his own personal thing. He has his own personal collection. So he has Meguiar's and Turtle Wax and stuff like that from like the 40s and 50s. It's nuts. 
and he has his original containers and everything. So I would say a couple of years before they go bad usually is where I would set them at before they start, uh, you know, separating and stuff like that where you can't use it that much anymore. So give yourself two to three years before it really goes bad. Uh, maybe there are some shelf dates, but I haven't really seen it. I've been using some of the products that have been in my closets for a couple of years now, and I don't really have any issues with it. I might shake them up just to make sure they're okay, but I haven't, I haven't seen really any issues with them. Have you tried more shine? Uh, have you shied more shine, less time? I don't think so. I am getting new products in from them. Uh, Johnny, uh, obviously, Stoner is one of my uh, my buddies up there. Peter, you can see it up there. He sent me the banner. Um, he is getting me their 2019 products as well. Turtle Wax is getting me their 2019 products. 303 is getting me their 2019 products. Uh, I forgot who else is giving me some 2019 products. Like Again, these guys send it to me for free and just say, hey, is there, if there's anything I need, I'm like, I need a four-door car. Go ahead and buy me a Civic Type R, and we'll write it off as a tax refund. But other than that, you know, I don't, I don't. They are really good companies, and most of these companies up here, I don't care which company it is up here, they are so friendly. Now, sadly, I didn't get to try three hundred threes uh, one polish yet. I really slacked on them. I'm sure they kind of wrote me off by now because they sent me all those products. I never used them, but uh, they make really good products. Companies. Well, I used a three D all in one. It was really, really good. Their three uh, D HD speed, really good. Uh, but again, I didn't try the 3D1, so I'm, I'm sure they're like wrote me off by now, and I will eventually get to it. But all these companies are so easy to deal with, so easy to talk to. Voodoo Car Care, they don't make the best products in the world. They're new to the thing, but they're very kind of low end. But they're very easy to deal with, very nice to talk to people, and I like that about that. They listened, and that's really cool. Uh, I was just going to put a mention in that, well, uh, I've seen that the Turtle Wax logo in the background. That's old school right there. Turtle Wax taking you way back. Oh, the Turtle Wax one? No, that's the, that's the, they said this, this is actually a fly. I don't think you can see there's grommets on this side. This is actually meant, was meant to be flown outside the Turtle Wax headquarters. And they actually gave it to me when I asked for a banner. They said, we don't have a banner, but how about we give you the flag that was supposed to go on top of the Turtle Wax's headquarters. And I was like, in front of the, you know, the, by the flagpole with the American flag, you know, that kind of front thing. And I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. So that's where that flag is from. It was actually supposed to be flown from their flagpole there right in front of their headquarters. And they went ahead and gave it to me instead. So they said, oh, we'll just get another one. And I was like, cool. So that's the way that went down. So um, again, those guys are super chill up there in Turtle Wax. So nice. It's a small company. It's the size of maybe, I'd say their, their office in the office complex may be like, 20,000 square foot at most. It has a, a big garage with like millions of LED lights up there for lighting and stuff. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, they're so chill, so laid back. Their lab where they do all the testing, all the lab beacons, the beakers and stuff, that's all in there. You can go in there and see it. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Those people are so chill. They're like, come on back up anytime. And you're like, this is cool. I like this. And uh, I, I just like that kind of attitude. You know, somebody wants to listen and stuff. So that's really cool. What are your thoughts on the Porsche Panamera? There's a couple of them in my neighborhood, as a matter of fact. Um, they're cool that you have a Porsche that's a four-door, but they don't have the looks that I'd be interested in. Looks-wise, they just don't they do not do it for me. They're just like, blah. You know what I mean? I like to get the nano skin, but I watched a video here on saying that the feel traditional is better because it actually picks up the contaminants and the inbred clay doesn't. I haven't had any issues. Anytime you run your hand across, like you know how you freshly clay your car and you know how smooth it is, I get the exact same feeling I get when I use any type of nano skin type product. I have never had a single issue. It still feels like you're running your hands across glass. It is an amazing feeling. Um, try it for yourself. Don't even even when I tell people that you know, whatever you whatever you hear me say on on here on YouTube is just word of mouth. You can take my opinion and go with it, or you can just take it and throw it away. It's up to you. I will not say I am a pro detailer. I will never claim that I'm a hobbyist detailer. But I say in this opinion, because I've used so many of them, buy one for yourself and give it a shot and let your your own uh, use you know, uh, tell you which way you want to go, whether you want to keep using it or you want to go back to tra traditional clay. I really think you'll be surprised, and I think you'll be happy that you bought it. Eagle One Spray Wax is amazing, Logan. It's just sad that Eagle One was bought out by the Energizer Battery Company, and then I, I lost all contact with them. But their spray as you wet their spray wet wax is amazing. A few more 3D. I I plan to, Aaron. I kind of got that was when when 3D contacted me to do this, the HD One. I'll show it to you guys so you guys know what I'm talking about. So they contacted me a couple months ago after I did the whatchamacallit. This is their brand new hybrid polish compound, okay? It's supposed to be like a step up from the HD Speed. HD Speed, by the way, is stellar. I don't know if I have it here. Yeah, HD Speed, a stellar product. But this is actually 
their HD1 is a polish and compound in one, so it does everything at the same time. And then, you know, they sent me their Monton Wax. Now, they sent it to me when I was in that lull where I'm like, look, I'm beyond burnout. I really don't want to make videos. And uh, I kind of slacked. Again, 3D makes a great company. The, the lady I was dealing with up there is super cool. But I had to write her and I told her, I said, look, I, I'm slacking and I'm di I'm so sorry about not making your video yet. I, I will get to it, I promise you. But I, I just, I know they probably wrote, written me off by now because I haven't like a, probably mooched off of them and stole their stuff. I mean, even if they ask tomorrow, they say, hey, we want our stuff back. I just send it back to them because I feel so terrible about it. But they sent it to me as a demo and uh, I really want to try it. But when I had, when I did try the HD Speed, I absolutely loved it. Two thumbs up there. I just wish I could try the HD one pol the hybrid polish, but I just as that, at that point in my YouTube, I was starting to get like, really burnt out at the end of last year, and I was like, I, I can't do it anymore, and uh, I just didn't want to get up every day and make videos because you know I I work the evenings at work, and when I get up, it's like around uh, eleven to noon, and that's when I usually go out there and make my videos for you guys, and by then that's the peak of the heaty hot season here in Florida. I'm like, Ugh, it's, you know, it's like a hundred degrees, and I just I was starting to be like. Yeah, I ain't getting up and I don't really give a damn. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sleep in and not make a video, you know. And that's generally what started to happen where I started to slow down and I was just like I was burnt out and I didn't want to wreck the channel by not by just making crap videos. So I just had to take a break and it was been one of the best things I have done. Thankfully I don't have to rely on the YouTube income for paying my bills. I have my regular job, but now I'm like, oh, I'm rejuvenated. I want to get back to cleaning cars and making videos for you guys because it's a lot of fun as long as you keep it fun. And that's the way I've always seen you at YouTube. If I make videos, cool. If I don't, so be it, you know, and uh, I'll do the best I can for you guys. Uh, what this use to tack up your banners? Uh, what did I use, Ranger? I just used nails. I'd say just little tiny skinny nails. I just nailed them up there. Like most of them have grommets in there. I, I know you guys can't see them, but they're little grommets around the whole thing. So I just put nails in where the grommets go and then just the... The grommets sit on the nails. That's all it is. It's nothing special. Um, you know, a lot of no people don't know much about the Kia, but I'll tell you one thing. They get some muscle clothes. I like the Kia. I think Kia is getting better and better. Again, again, they're owned by Hyundai. I think they do, they're do. they doing really good, and they've got leaps and bounds to go. I think the Stinger is a good attempt. Not a pretty car, but it's a very good first attempt. I like a sports saloon that they're making. Again, a lot of people are like, why don't you get a, a Kia Stinger? And I'm like, they don't do it for me. And that's just generally what it comes down to. And for the Kia Stinger GT, it's fifty thousand dollars. And I'm like, fifty thousand, I can get a lot nicer car. And I'm just, it's not for me. You know what I mean? Uh, why don't you do a video on how to properly detail a car? I've done a lot of videos on how to wash cars in the past. Feel free to search them. Um, I don't know exactly what else you'd want to make in videos, but I've done a lot of those kind of things in the past. Uh, I know Tula. I appreciate you watching the videos. I know I've been slacking bum. Uh, when Brian contacted me a couple weeks ago for the Slingers, he said, "Hey, would you do this for me?" And I'm like, "Sure, buddy." And finally, I was at the point where I I was ready to go ahead and make some videos again. Where I'm like, "Okay, I can get out there." And then I like again, I was going to get out there Thursday, and then Thursday was really dark and windy. It was the beginning of the cold front coming, in. and then Friday was like complete heavy thunderstorm all day long. And I'm like, "What the heck?" So of course I couldn't make videos for it then. And then Saturday and Sunday when it was sunny. It was cold, but we were out house shopping all the, all the weekend. Literally, we didn't get back till eight o'clock tonight from house shopping, so I just didn't get to make a video. So I promise you, I will get this video out this week. If I can get a hold of my wife's minivan, I'll actually use the minivan as the slave for the Griot's Garage Best of Show spray wax. So we're we're getting there, guys. I am getting back in the groove of it. Just bear with me here. You bear with me. I will get the stuff done. As a matter of fact, because this is meant to be used in the the foam can, I'm probably going to use. I'll make a foam cannon for this video, a separate hand washing video for this as well. So that way, I might do it the same day, but actually break it up into two different videos. So that way, people can see just a quick video of the foam cannon, whether it works or not, and then a full breakdown of the actual hand wash of it and see what I think about it like that. So I think that's going to be my game plan this week, and we'll see what happens and uh, if it goes down that way. So that's where we're at, guys. And again, I've been uh, just a slack and bum, and it's, it's, in the end, it's my fault. But I, I was at that point where I'm like, God, thank God I don't do this for a job because I was just like, Pfft. you know, I know there's guys out there. I'll give you, you know, who's that big giant guy that uh, pan something? I don't know what his name is. He followed me on Instagram and say hey to me the other day. And uh, that was actually, you know, I'm like, oh, I recognize that name. And I looked on his Instagram, and he has like 400,000 or 200,000 uh, followers on Instagram. And it's, it's, that means, you know, it's such a big channel sees my channel. Hey, that's, that's pretty cool, you know. But uh, thankfully, I, you know, these, a lot of these guys do it for a job. They literally are doing it and they're, maybe they're recording it on the side while they're doing this for a job. And I don't have to. 
I just like reviewing stuff when I want to, and I just enjoy doing it for a hobby. And I don't have to go out and do that as every day. Cause I don't know if I'd want to make videos after doing it every day as a job. I mean, that would kind of suck, wouldn't it? Uh, just winter mirror is great. Oh, don't worry, Matthew. I, I use the radar detectors on my cars. You know that Matthew, my wife has their escort red line in the van, minivan. Um, the Honda Prelude out there has the Unity R3. The GTR has the Valentine 1 in it. And then this white Prelude, whenever it's, uh, that fits fixed, it's going to have something else. But we're going to be living not in the downtown area of Windermere, but on the, the northern end of Windermere is what we're looking at right now. Uh, if you know the Windermere Road, uh, McKinnon Road area right through there, that's where the neighborhood is at where we're looking. So if you know Windermere really good, that's where it's generally at. But I know I, I know downtown Windermere right through Main Street. Yeah, the cops are like local yokels. They've got nothing better to do because there's really no crime out there. So what they do is just look for speeders because the speed limit's 35 through there like everywhere. And it's like, who the hell does 35? It's like, who drives that slow? You know, on these big roads. So I understand it's a speed trap land. So it's pretty good. But I, obviously, Matthew, you're, you know the area or you live out there. Have you had any problems with mother's nano skin clay? Never. I don't remember having any issues. The only time I've ever seen any marks from a, a nano skin type product was when the uh, the surface was dried and it wasn't lubricated. My my uh, my hand went off the area that was lubricated, but it, it wiped right off. It was no big deal. I mean, it was just like oops, and then it just took. Hey, I just I just wet it down with more detailer and I just wiped it off with a microfiber towel and it was gone. That's how that's how it went down. Uh, you should make a video on cheap DA polisher versus expensive Harbor Freight ones. I again, I don't know about that because I don't know that many people that buy Harbor Freight polishers. And again, that's that would be pretty expensive because I think those things are like sixty bucks. Uh, what's the best product? Uh, what's the best product to companies? What do you mean by that? What's the best product uh, out? There is a market right now, and it's coming to using compound. Compound products. Some of the best I have had would be probably, and people might laugh at this, but a lot of the products will work no matter, it just depends how you use them. I've had great luck with Chemical Guys. I haven't had any issues with Chemical Guys. I've had great luck with Meguiar's. I've had good luck with 303's compounds. I had, uh, what else have I used? Uh, Creo's Garages, like uh, three-in-one polishes. I've used them very good uses. Uh, it just, it's, it's most of the time, it's gonna come down to the technique. You got to use good technique when you're polishing. If you're hauling ass across it, it doesn't give, you're not giving the the, uh, the pad enough time to cut properly on the actual paint. So you can't be hauling ass while you're out there uh, doing it. You have to do nice, smooth, steady motions back and forth, overlapping motions, nice, because you've got to let the product work and you've got to let the pad work the product into the paint. You can't be because then it's not gonna work. So it's all about, just generally comes down to proper technique. If Once you get the technique down, the speed down, and the pressure down, you'll be fine. Again, I started as a hobbyist and I just got the Jeep Grills Garage and I just, you know, after a couple of times using it, you figured out what was the proper way after, you know, well, listen to the pros. Honestly, there's a lot of good pros on YouTube that are comp like real pros, not these guys that say they're pros, like watch real pros doing it and just watch their technique and just copy it, essentially copy it. Then you'll get the idea of how it works the best and you'll be fine out there. Uh, don't be scared of it. It's not going to hurt your car. Uh, especially a lot of these DA polishers, they automatically shut off if you take it too hard of an angle or you push too much pressure down, it automatically stops from spinning. So you don't have any problems about trying to burn into the paint. Like a direct drive, it doesn't matter how hard you put into it, that bitch is gonna be like, eh, it's like being in a drill, You're like just drilling through stuff. It will just keep on chucking, you know what I mean? So just get yourself a DA polisher, you'll be all right. Uh, what do you think about, uh, you can get coupons for $49 still, again, $50 for a product I'm only gonna use like one time, it's like, yeah, you know, maybe if I was given one to try, but fifty dollars for something, it's kind of like uh, if I'm only gonna use it one time. So that's a great thing. How do you get products to send you companies? Uh, they just find me on YouTube, Tula. I don't, I don't go and ask for anything. I've never asked for a company to send me anything. These companies just contact me out of the blue, whether it's via Instagram, whether it's via messengers. Uh, they'll just contact me. I've had them contact me through Facebook. They follow my Facebook links. And they just privately message me and say, hey, we're so-and-so from this company. Would you be interested in trying our products? And that's how out, all of these companies, every one of them here, every single one, even Trump, he, they contacted me and said, hey, do you want to try our products? I have never, I never asked for one of these companies to send me products. Not one. Everyone saw my videos. Usually, like, like I'll give you the example. The 3D company, I made the, the HD speed video. I bought it on my own. I bought it through AutoGeek. I tried it out, I was really impressed by it. I was like, dude, this is easy to use, love it, great results. About a month or two later, I forgot what her name is, it starts with an S. She contacted me and said, I'm so-and-so from 3D out here in California. 
would you be interested in trying some products? We got a brand new HD one coming out. Would you be interested in being one of our test people? And I'm like, sure, why not? That's all it was. That's how it goes down. I don't ask anybody for anything. I'm no beggar. I buy my own stuff. Example, I'm giving, I'm going to be giving away a lot of this stuff from Limitless Car Care. I bought it all with my own money. Uh, I did not pay for it. This turtle wax was beyond overpriced because it's the AutoZone's brand new $14.99. I paid for it. Nobody paid for it. Now, they are going to send me stuff from Turtle Wax, I, but I will tell you that in the video that I did. But this, I purchased it on my own. And uh, so I don't ask for anything from anybody. I just tell you that's the way it goes. And um, they write me and say, hey, would you try our stuff? I saw you trying one of our two of our products. Would you be interested in trying more of our products for, for free? And we'll just send them to you. And I'm like, all right, that sounds good. And I ask, the one thing I do, I said, can I have a banner? Send me a banner to hang it up on my wall. And that's all I ask. And generally, that's the way it goes. And um, like I have a few companies like Wax Gods has not sent me a banner. Masterson's kept selling me. He was going to send me a banner. I haven't heard from Greg Masterson in a long time. Maybe he's just getting too cool and too big for me. But yeah, he um, he hasn't sent me a banner, but he contacted me. Wax Gods contacted me. There's probably a few out there that other ones have contacted me that have sent me products, but they've never sent me a banner, even though I've, I kept asking for it. But that's the only thing I've ever asked for. I don't ask for payments. Some of these big YouTubers I found out, like Stoner Car Care told me that they actually ask for payments. For making videos because essentially uh, these big youtubers are giving them free publicity which i understand that but i guess there's a, a one big youtuber that um tried to charge stoner car care like 10 or fifteen thousand dollars a video the guy has like you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers i want it maybe it's maybe it was chris fx i guess is insane i've never watched any of his videos i think he has like a million subscribers but I guess he he goes through a lawyer and through all kinds of stuff now like anytime he has this stuff and i guess he has a full write up write up thing and said for every single video, I want this much money. I don't know if it was him. It was somebody with a crap load of subscribers. And he said, in order for me to make a video for you, you have to pay me a certain amount of money. And that's the only reason I'll make a video for you because I'm not gonna give you free publicity without you paying me. Because essentially, I guess it's somebody with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers, they are going to get tons of free publicity and tons of free uh, ad revenue. Because let's say, if I have to put up a turtle wax video on TV, how much is that gonna earn me? Forty, fifty thousand dollars for how many things? So these comp these guys online, I guess, are now starting to say, hey, I want a piece of that because you don't have to put it online. I'm your free TV ad. I want ten or fifteen thousand dollars for every single product I review. And so in our car carrier, I guess, said, No thanks, we're not gonna play that game. So they walked away. I don't ask for it. I'd like again, I don't care. I just want a banner. That's I'm banners are what cost 20, 30 bucks. I just want a banner. That's all I ever have asked for. So that's my uh, that's my thing when it comes to stuff. Thoughts on McGuire's Ultimate Compound Polish. Very good for what it is. No problems. I'm I know it's not the best probably out there in the world, but for at the price point and the fact that you can get it over the counter at Walmart and stuff, very good for what it is. What's your favorite brand of wax? Mmm. I will probably the best paste wax I've ever used in my life is from Pinnacle. It's a company uh, that's made by AutoGeek. They have a pure a white car wax, a carnival wax. Do that stuff. You don't have to. As soon as you apply it, you can wipe it right back off again. Let's put it this way: the little tin is sixty dollars for it, but it's unbelievable. the 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 reflection you get it lasts about two to three months before it's all gone. But it's pure white wax. I forgot what the. I don't think it's probably Brazilian, but it's it's ridiculous. It's so soft. It just melts right on there. And as soon as you apply it, you wipe it right back off again. There's no letting it set up, no letting it haze. You can do a call like that, it wipes right off. But the, the shine you get from it is like nothing I've ever seen before. So I'd say that's probably the best, but you have to be willing to spend the money. So if I would tell you to do that, wait for AutoGeek to have a special sale. I usually have AutoGeek on follow from Instagram and Facebook. And then when you ever see those big 25, 30% off things, 40% off, that's when you buy them. Still the Christmas lights up? Yes, I do, buddy. Uh, you're gonna be a famous company when you test your amount of product. Uh, no, I don't think I'm gonna be famous. I'm just a, a guy. I've, I've been recognized a few times out in public. Again, I got recognized playing Call of Duty Xbox the other day. I was on my Xbox playing Call of Duty Blackout and a subscriber just happened to be in the same game I was in and he started talking to me and I'm like, okay, we just happened to be in the same team so we were talking the entire game. And then he added me as a friend on the Xbox. That was pretty cool because you know, I don't go out there and tell anybody who I am. I mean, I'm just, I'm a nobody on YouTube compared to these guys. Look at these Logan Paul morons and stuff with their huge channels and stuff that make stupid videos. I'm, I'm not that guy. So being recognized is, it's funny, you know, it's because it's kind of like, oh, cool. Somebody recognized me, but I, it's, it doesn't matter to me one way or another. 
Hey, Chad, happy New Year's. Have you tried any uh, ammo products? No, I haven't, Adrian. I'm sorry, I haven't. I love the fact that you're not a professional detailer and you get the honest opinion. You do not need to uh, try to sell a product. You just let us know. You know, I, I will never say I'm a professional. I am no Larry from Ammo. I'm none of those big boys. I'm just your average Joe that still has to work every day of the week to pay for his toys and pay for the bills and that I wash and clean and take care of my cars just like you guys do. There's no difference. I just happen to make videos and give my two cents about it while I make my videos. And because I've tried so many products now, I can usually give you a, a pretty fair and balanced review um, about how I feel about it. Whether you take that advice and buy something or not, that's up to you. I will never tell anybody to buy it, and that's just the way it goes. This is my review, my two cents, and you guys can either take it or leave it. And that's the way it's always been for me. It doesn't, I guess it just doesn't matter, you know? I'm just like, hey, you like it, you like it. And we go from there. What do you think about hard buffers? I've never tried them, so I don't know, John. I just don't know, and I can't give you a fair and balanced review on that. Uh, when are you trying out the new Meguiar spray sealant? As soon as Meguiar's actually shipped it to me. I, 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 I told about this earlier. So I ordered about three weeks ago. Uh, right after, it was right around the beginning of December, I ordered all every new 2019 product. It was the ceramic spray, the spray sealant, everything. I ordered everything. Three weeks go by, and I'm like, I haven't seen the box from Meguiar's yet. So I reached out to them. I'm like, where's my box? And they're like, where did you order it from? And I'm like, your website. Uh, hold on. About, I swear to God, like not an hour or two later, I get an email saying, your box is on its way from Meguiar's. And I'm like, right, three weeks later, you're finally going to ship it out. So as soon as it gets here, I will be trying it out immediately. Don't you worry. It's just that I don't know what happened in the Meguiar's end, but I was like, dear God, three weeks, and you still haven't even shipped it out yet. And then they finally, now it's going to be here like Thursday of this week, they said. I'm like, damn, that's some slow ass shipping. But whatever, you know, it's, you know, I, I bought it because like it's not in stores yet. Like, especially the ceramic spray from stuff, you can only get it online. So, but I bought every single 2019 product at the same time and I ordered it. So it was like, I don't know, $60, $70 for the products I bought. So again, McGuire's has never sent me anything for free. They've never even reached out to me, but I will. There are some of my most viewed videos is McGuire's videos. It's funny enough, if you go through my top videos, it's from videos years ago when I my, just kind of started my channel. Those are the most viewed videos for the most part are, are all McGuire's. Every one of the McGuire's ones have 100,000 something views each. And that's pretty nuts when you only have like 26,000 subscribers. So if it tells you anything, it's pretty good. Uh, when are you trying out the new McGuire spray sealant? Like I said, uh, I don't uh, like ammo products. Sup, dude? I'm late to the show. I need to recap the past two hours. Feel free to watch it later, buddy. I'm not going to be on too long anyways. I've, my throat's already starting to get a little bit scratchy from talking too much. But it had been a while, and you guys did see the Slingers video that I just put out. And uh, I wanted to update you with what's going on in my life and all that fun stuff. If you follow me on Instagram, if you haven't followed me, go follow me right now on Instagram. I've been, I usually post things there first. I'll post things on Facebook next. Um, you'll get a lot more idea what's going on with me. I really, I'm kind of excited now because we're looking at other cars, a four door car for me, but that probably won't come for a couple months down the road. And we're all starting to look at new homes, which will get me out of Kissimmee and into a home with a much bigger garage that I can really spread out in. Right now, as you see, we're like cramped in here. I'll, I'll walk you around the front of the garage. As you can see, we are absolutely cramped in this bad boy right now. You got one car, two car, and two motorcycles. Plus, all, plus everything else is in the front of the garage. So it's really, really cramped right now. And uh, because of that, it's like I want the three-car garage minimum. I wanted a four-car, but it just seems like most most homes for sale that are in our price range don't have four-car garages. One we looked at today did, but it was a separate building built next door to the house that was matching the house, but it was actually a two-car garage. But uh, it, it was a very nice home, but I don't know if it really blew me away. It, my wife likes it a lot because it came with four acres. So... It's out in the country, but it, I don't know, it just didn't have that presence. When you walk up to the house, you're like, damn, this is amazing. It didn't have, it was, it was a nice home, but it, like the inside was amazing, but it just didn't go, whoa. And it didn't have the gaming room. I want a gaming room above the garage where you can be as loud as you want, have people over, and the rest of the house doesn't hear you because you're only going to be annoying the garage, and that's no big deal. And uh, that home doesn't ha have that, and I want that in my house. So generally, that's the way it goes down. So, you know, that's generally what's been going on. So we'll probably be moving sometime in the next, sometime this, this year. I don't know when. 
uh, where the, the realtor was like, you guys should put up your house. We should come put it up in the next couple of weeks to the next month. We should go put it up. She didn't want to come by and they do want to do a walkthrough and then get us to start basically cleaning out the house, making sure it's like as clean as possible, you know, having a professional cleaning crew come in and make sure everything's spotless and then list it for sale. She said, list it higher than what you expect to make. That way you have time to go ahead and uh, start looking for homes now. And then, you know, if somebody does happen to, hey, they want to buy it for way more than you were expecting, then good. Then you make a lot more anyways. But if not, then it's no big deal. You can always lower the price to what you expect to actually get later on. But she's at least you get started in the system so that people are starting to view it and they're starting to get an eye on it. So I was like, oh, that's, that's actually a good idea. I didn't think about that. She's like, you never list it for what you actually want to get from it. You always list it much higher. And uh, then you go from there because I guess sometimes people, these northerners come in with deep pockets and they, they're willing to spend the big money. So she said, if you put it exactly what you wanted it at, she said, sometimes it'll sell within a week and then you're screwed because you don't have a house to live in because you don't have the next house lined up. So generally, that's what we're looking at right now. And then the same goes for a car. Once the GTR is paid off, I'm going to be buying another car, a four-door car because two-door car life kind of sucks with a baby. So... And even though I'm trying to put them in the back seat, why they all have back seats, but it, you know how it is, it sucks. First Happy New Year, how much is the Turtle Wax Pink? It was $14.99 AutoZone. Very overpriced in my opinion, but uh, I'll let you know. As soon as it hits Walmart, we'll really see a new uh, uh, thing, you know what I mean? We'll start to see a, a realistic prices. AutoZone was also the first one that had the the Meguiar's uh, all-wheel cleaner. Let me show, see if I have it here. Yeah. So AutoZone was the first place I found this last year. Very good wheel cleaner, ultimate wheel cleaner, but it was like $13.99 and I dogged it in the video saying it was overpriced. Well, guess what? Walmart has it at $8 and change. Again, AutoZone was beyond overpricing it, but AutoZone was the first one to ever have it stuck. So I think they set their price so high, like, hey, we're the new boys on the block and we're gonna rip people off for that price. And I think that's generally what happens. And then once Walmart gets it and everybody else gets it and they price it down to where it should be, then AutoZone and the rest of them come down to a more realistic price. And I think that's what just happened. Cleaner, what would you recommend? Honestly, that right there. Get that McGuire's Ultimate Wheel Cleaner. You're going to do fine with it. Beadmaker, I don't have that product yet to review. Um, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm shopping around for a buffer right now. I really think the McGuire's. Get the Griot's Garage. Griot's Garage, even the big boys. We're talking Mike Phillips from Auto Geek, the head detailer there. Uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Larry from Ammo NYC. Many of his videos, you'll see him still using the Griot's Garage DA polishers. If you're having these big dogs that do this every single day of their life as a professional, you're still using the Griot's Garage. I know there's roops and all that in the flex, but they're still breaking out the D Griot's. That's an amazing that's an amazing product. I know it's maybe not as quite as powerful as the Flex and the Roops, but the price is not there either. So it's a great beginner to novice one. And the average every day can use it all day long. And that's why I like it. It does what I needed to do. If I need had to do five cars a day, then a, yes, I would invest in the Flex or Roops or something like that. Uh, so we'll see what happens here in the future. Man, we still got 30 people and I'm starting to get a little tired. So I've been getting up early because we've been having like – my wife come woke me up this morning and was like, dude, we got to go. We got to go and see the house. We had a house viewing today. I think I forgot what time it was. It was at noon and I hadn't gotten woken up yet. She came in like 10 something and says, you need to get up and get ready. We've got to go. We got to get on the road because where we live in Kissimmee, we have to go all the way to the other side of Orlando on the west side of Orlando is Windermere. So we had to get up and drive all the way over there. And I was like, crap, it's like 35, 40 minute drive. I got to haul ass. So I hadn't even got up and she's like, get up now. We're going to go. So... I've been getting up early, really early on some of these days. I haven't been getting much sleep because of my work schedule. And I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. But I was like, oh, we got to go, we got to go. So now I'm starting to get tired now early. So now my wife's like, okay, well, now we got to start cleaning the house this week because we're going to have the realtors come in. And I'm like, oh, that means I'm going to have to start spending a lot of time during the weekdays. Instead of goofing off being a bum and sleeping in and playing some video games, I'm going to have to start cleaning up, the, especially the garage. The garage, as you know, is a, is a dump right now. So I'm going to have to start boxing these up, start labeling what, what company's products are in there because we're going to rent a, a rental unit down the road to start putting all that stuff in one of those air-conditioned storage units. So it basically frees it up, makes it look a lot more roomy and airy and stuff like that. That's what we're going to do. So make it, you know, jump through the hoops, you know, make it look all pretty. Because after we seeing the last nine homes yesterday and today, you see a lot of people don't, they, they're trying to sell homes, but they're filthy. And you're like, clean them first. When I walk into a filthy house, I'm just like, ew, ew, really? You want it, You want me to be impressed by your house, but it's just like doorknobs and stuff. They're filthy and your door switches and then your floors have junk in them. I'm like, call out a professional cleaner, clean the rugs the best you can. 
mop the floors, have it as sp clean and spotless as you can possibly make it, even if it's old. Do the best you can. These homes were somewhere like, ew, when you walked in. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to get to that. I have to touch up paint around the house, stuff like that. You know, we got to do all that. So she said, all right, well, we need to start cleaning up this week. So I guess the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing heavy cleaning around here and I'll be boxing up a lot of crap. So we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? Uh, Aero Cosmetics Waterless Wash Review, top rated on Amazon. I've never heard of that company before. I, I wonder, uh, again, I've never heard of Aero, so I'll have to now check into it and see. I know a lot of people have been writing me on Instagram about bead makers, so um, maybe you can give me some time, guys, and I'll go ahead and pick up a, a bottle. But again, give me a little bit of time because, again, I just I haven't picked it up, and I have so many new products about to start rolling in. Uh, from the companies. Again, Meguiar is going to be here. I know everybody's going to want to see the Meguiar reviews. Those are going to be hot on this year's stuff. That's why I try and get it out like this. As soon as the new company videos come out, like boom, 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 knocking them out right away to give you guys a, a review so that you can walk into your Walmart or whatever and you know you've got exactly what to expect or know what to expect anyways before you go in there and buy it. And that's what I'm really trying to do with it, you know? So we'll see, guys. Anybody have any last minute questions you would like to ask? If you have any last minute questions, feel free to ask right now and I will talk to you about it. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get off and go to sleep for tonight because I am a little bit tired. My, my son already went to bed, which means he's gonna be up super early tomorrow bouncing off the walls. Like what she'll do sometimes, if he gets up in the middle of the night, she'll come up and say, here, take him, I've got to sleep. And I'm like, no, because it makes me wake up now because uh, she's like, well, you're not working in the morning, so you need to go take care of him. And if he's bouncing off the walls at five o'clock in the morning, guess who has to get up at five o'clock in the morning? So that kind of sucks, so. We'll see what happens, but uh, let me know what else you got to do. At work, calling it a night. Uh, can you give a shout out to uh, Ponchatola Fire Department, in Louisiana? Thanks, man. Safe uh, thing. Oh, my battery just went off. Uh, they saved like, dude. I've uh, Ponchatola. I've never even heard of that, but I hope you guys out there have a great time. Wash your uh, fire trucks. I'll give you a quick story, real quick. I remember my uncle was a fireman for 35 years up in Illinois. I still remember being a little kid going up to Champaign, Illinois. And um, what we would, a lot of times when I get there is, yeah, as you know, they had to wash the trucks, the fire trucks after they'd get back with them and they had to clean them up. So my uncle, you know, being a five, six, seven, eight year old kid, whenever I was at the time, he would say, do you want to help wash the trucks? So I get out there with the guys and that would actually help wash the trucks with him. And that was, I still remember that all these years later, I would help wash the trucks when I was there. So uh, I hope you guys do good out there. Try and get some sleep. I know for some reason I'm not going to jinx you. My wife told me shut the hell up about uh, saying stuff so I won't comment on what I would normally say. And uh, I hope you guys have a great evening out there, out there in Louisiana. I haven't been out there in years. Probably since me and my wife, when I was in Pensacola and I drove over to New Orleans. And that was probably the last time I've been in Louisiana. I remember we went, it was like, a, it was like within a year or a year right after... Um, uh, Hurricane Katrina. I just remember there was just piles of piles of debris sitting in the streets. It was like head high piles of crap. I still remember that. It was like a year on. It was still looking that crappy out there. And you could see like around the edges of the buildings near the lakefront, near the, uh, the reserve, where you could see where the water line had got up to. And it was just like a water line all the way across. We're talking like eight, nine feet up. And, you know, um, he, I don't know if you how bad you got in Louisiana, but I still remember that. The guys that were locals, they took us out there for a car drive, and they showed us there. They stopped and said, look how high the water line was. This is how high the water got up to. And you're like, damn. We're talking like eight, nine feet up, and you're just like, holy cow. So that was pretty cool. But I hope you have all have a great night out there and uh, have some fun out there and clean those fire trucks, man. What's up with the pink turtle wax? That is the new car wash they sell. That it just came out of AutoZone. It'll be in Walmart and stuff soon. I'll let you guys see it right before I get off here. It's the Turtle Wax's Ice Snow Foam Wash. So it's made to be used as a hand wash as well as use it in the foam cannon. It will be on this week's review. So be sure to check it out there, guys. And we'll go on from there. But that's what it is. Um, I hope it helped you out there. I was going to ask. Uh, there was somebody I was. I'm scrolling up through real quick through the questions. So uh, bear with me, guys, as I'm scrolling up through all the questions. I'm trying to read. Excuse me. Read back there. Uh, brrr, scrolling, 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 scrolling. Oh my god, oh my god. There was something I was supposed to read and I totally zoned out on it. So I'm like, where was that at, man? Where was that at? Jeez, now, now I'm going to have a problem because now I want to find that question, what people were talking about, and I lost it where it was, who it was. I'm like, where did that go? Where did that go? And now I don't know where it is. So, oh well, I, I tried. I tried. 
Uh, it's just the way it goes. Oh, well. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah. No big deal. I can't find it. Anyways, guys, unless you have any more last-minute questions, I'm going to go ahead and pop off for the night and uh, expect to see the Turtle Wax review this week. Um, and then, we'll, again, we're going to do this stuff again later on. Uh, we'll do another uh, live stream again next weekend. Again, uh, last weekend we were doing something. And then, obviously, all the Christmas weekends we were doing something, so I didn't do any live streams. And now... I feel like I'm back in the mood to do some stuff again. And then we're going to talk about doing some giveaways. You guys know, you guys want some giveaways, I'm sure, don't you? Because a lot of people have been asking, when are you going to do some giveaways? Well, I finally bought a bunch of products from Limitless, so we're going to be sending them out for you guys, and uh, we'll go from there. But um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys want some of this stuff, don't you? Don't you? You want some of that. That's some of the best car wash I have ever tried, by the way. This stuff is so rich and so slick it barely it just slowly drains down this is the best you can use this in the foam cannon it'll blow your mind and you can use the two bucket fist this hand you'll put your hands in there it's just slick as ice it is nuts how good that product is just follow directions and you're gonna be like no way no way and the detailer slash it's a detailer slash carnival wax so it has carnival wax spray it down wipe it down like a regular detailer it'll haze up then you flip over your microfiber towel and buff it off and you have yourself a little bit of wax protection along with the detail it is amazing amazing product so there you go and there you do does anybody want me to do a giveaway real quick let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a giveaway if you're still awake because fortunately there's only 25 of you guys so i can do this real quick i can do a, a question for you guys and see if you're interested in that or not if not we'll do a we'll do a proper video giveaway maybe do some fun stuff for you but maybe i'll take care of you guys and uh, we can go from there if not i'll do i'm going to do a proper giveaway videos and we'll actually see what's going on and uh we'll do some like you know one so that way uh more people can participate in it and stuff like that so um you know, because I, I want to come take care of you guys a little bit more than I've been taking care of you guys recently. I've done. I used to do a lot of videos back in the day of giveaways, and um, funny enough, I don't think I had one person ever write and say thank you. They got the products. I gave away hundreds of dollars of products, and not one person said thank you. And I was just kind of like, "Wow, there's some ungrateful bitches out there in this world." And I mean, I'd send them like I, I think Stoner sent away a hundred and something dollars for the products to one dude, and it went to Miami, and the guy didn't even know. He didn't even let me know the products even reached him. I had no idea if he got it or not. And I was just like. Wow, bro, really? I mean, it's just, that's the way it went. So I, that's why I kind of stopped doing giveaways because I was just like, nobody even took the time for a little just thank you note that I got your product in or I tried it out or something. Nothing, not one person. And after that, you after a while, you start spending money and you're just like, why should I keep doing it? Why should I keep spending my hard-earned money if I can even get a simple thank you? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know, that's the way I felt about it, so... There we go. So two people want to give away. That's not enough people. That means a lot of people are asleep right now anyways, you know, because I would have assumed a lot of people would rather do a giveaway with only 26 people online because it's a lot less people to compete against. If I put, once I put it up on YouTube, then I'm going to have hundreds of comments, and then you're fighting for a lot more people to fight against. So it's the way it goes. Well, guys, uh, use it on the fire truck for a video for a review. Yeah, I, I can't get to Louisiana, buddy, so it'll be a little bit hard for me to get all the way out there to make a review for you, but we'll figure out something. All right, guys, since everybody's falling asleep on me, uh, that's just the way it goes. We'll do this again next week, I promise you guys. I'll try and come back on next, next Sunday. How's that sound, guys? I will give you a heads up, get on next Sunday. That'll be your inside secret. Be on there next Sunday. I usually try and do it sometime at night. So maybe around 11, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time is when you should probably be looking for YouTube. Uh, put on notification bells, whatever, and I think that's when I'm going to do a big giveaway. So uh, be prepared for that um, because, again, I, I bought all the stuff and I'm going to give it away. That's what I like doing. I like taking care of my people. I just wish people would take two seconds to say, thank you, Chad. Sweet. That's all I want. You know, just, just common sense stuff that are polite, but people aren't polite anymore in this world. They're all dickheads, so... You just got to kind of deal with it. So good. I hope to see you guys all the next week again. Come check out the Turtle Wax Review. This will be sometime this week. Hopefully it'll be sunny tomorrow. I'll test it out on the Blue Prelude. Um, I will try. I want to try and get the best of show spray wax on my wife's video to be in this week. But of course, Monday through Friday, I don't have access to the van. So I don't know when I can get it. And then if she wants to look at more houses next weekend, we'll be looking at homes, I guarantee. Because I really want to go to Clearwater and drive that Audi S8 used. They have at Loki Motor Company, which is the Mercedes company in, in Clearwater. And we'll see. They've been contacting me. There's a, they're also also in 2019 Civic Type R in Tampa. They've been writing me to get me to come buy their Civic Type R. It's blue and the favorite color I love. And I'm like, ooh, it's so tempting. So I think I'm going to go over there unless we're looking at houses where the realtor is coming out here. That means I'm going to have to be 
making this bitch spotless. So it'll be crazy. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate you guys always hanging with me. We're in 2019 now. Let's go have another great year. I want to I wanna see myself at 30, 35,000 subscribers sometime this year. I think that's doable. Last year, I gained over 10,000 subscribers. In the last couple of months, I really haven't gained that much. Maybe like a thousand and a half. But, you know, it's just because I haven't really been doing much probably the last three months. So, but I don't expect anything more than that. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on whenever this video comes out sometime this week, either Wednesday or Saturday. I'll see you guys then. Take care. I love you all.